welcome back to another episode of the Dead Realms campaign. I think this is episode 16, 17? I 17. think it's 16. 17. Okay. All right, yep. 17. Dang, that mu- that long. But um, I am your humble DM, Tyler, and as you can see, we're all hooded gang tonight. Um, So let us introduce the players, which we only have three tonight. Unfortunately, Blue couldn't make it because he's working. Um, But hopefully he'll return to us shortly. So without further ado, for the players, if you would so kindly introduce yourselves while I prepare some dice for what's about to happen. Oh, I'm Axius. I'm playing Axius, a uh, tiefling barbarian paladin. All right. Hi, I'm Bob. I'm playing Ichabod Iron Eyes, half, half elf fighter slash rogue. Hi, I'm Justin Case. I'm playing Koto Shoshu, who is a human monk. All right. And we are about to get started on the game. First off, if you would like to join our campaign and like to join in the zombie apocalypse D and D campaign, you can join the Discord of the Pocket Dimension Discord, which is linked below the video. I also like to thank Lady K Does Art for the amazing artwork and logo. And depending on the circumstances tonight, I'll probably thank a bunch of other people to check them out. So without further ado, let's start. You can all hear that? Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. As you guys were coming down the mountain from... You were going up the mountain, encountered some gnolls, and stealthed your way through most of the encounter. Then, after climbing over such mountain, deciding what to do next, you guys encountered what seems like to be an entrance to some sort of creature's home especially when there's fire dogs coming out and on top of that exploding dog that came out in which you guys avoided and then further coming down you decided to massacre a bunch of goblins and take their stuff and their food Anea was taught how to use the bow and Koto knowing more about the party's backstory and you guys were on your way to the town of if I could just grab the name for this real quick because the t- name is weird uh, Lork, yes. the, ta- the mining town of Lork you guys were traversing the hilllands with Axius and Iron Axe investigating a very disturbing um, sign of danger um, and then going further away there was an explosion and we stopped at such explosion with Axius and Ichabod failing their saves and at the same time Koto stopping the party. First off, Axius and Ichabod, you both take 15 points of bludgeoning damage as the shrapnel from such explosions basically rings bells in your ears and as you are trying to regain focus of what the situation is. There's just a bunch of smoke and debris all over the place. Beforehand, Axios, you said that you wanted to go into a range. Would you still like to do that? Um, yeah, I mean, if I'm not doing five feet on this, yeah, I'll go into a range. Okay. So, at that point, Koto, I need you to make a perception check. With advantage? Um... Not with advantage, because at this point, there's so much, like, smoke coming from such explosives that it's kind of blocking the surrounding area a bit. Oh, so it's just 23. Really 23. So, you could see Axius and Ichabod dazed and confused, and as well as your, and clearly, like, as far as, like, their silhouettes in the smoke. And while you're trying to figure out what kind of situation is this, you do hear at the distance the same like the sound of galloping of horses. With such information, what would you like to do? As far as speed is concerned, you are 25 feet away from Ichabod and Axios in front of you, and the rest of the party is 15 feet behind you. What would you like to do? I tell Anea to uh, tell her to get down on one knee and get the bow ready, and I do a, right. a sharp whistle towards my party members. Ichabod okay. and Actius. Alright. 
as you guys, Ichabod and Axius, you are recovering from the sudden explosion, you do hear a whistle. But then with you also hear galloping. And you, Axius, with your blind. So we're kind of like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> so it makes All sense right. that, you know, we're not really prepared what the hell is going on. <laughs> hey so man, I, I like think it. it's really cool when the dice, you know, line up with what's happening in the story. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, my mistake, and I was writing initiative. Actually, I think about who would you like to go first between the two of you for uh, simultaneously? Simultaneously. Wait. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think this is the first time where... Party members decide to act simultaneously, and I'll explain to that when we get on the way. Let me share everyone else's initiatives. Okay, so, Koto, you start to, with your last perception check, you do hear the galloping horses, and they're coming closer. You're 25 feet away. But you could tell that the galloping horses are a little bit further out, way further away as far as where Axius and Ichabod are currently at. But it's coming. You hear that it is coming quickly. What would you like to do? I mean, I can't so, see him through the dust cloud. That uh, dynamite. Would you like to move, up, reposition, right? or anything like that? I don't really need a reposition. I was in Overwatch when they were looking at the the corpse slash sign. I was it keeping watch over him, so I got. At my advantage point, I can get 600 feet down the mountain if I need to, but I can't really see through this cloud, so I'm I'm really staying where I'm at, trying not to move okay. as much because I'm thinking maybe the guy on the, the horseback, he can't see me either. He's looking for shadows in the dust cloud. So I'm going to ready my action, and I, I got an arrow knocked. If I see a guy... Uh, acting hostile towards my party members. I'm going to let the arrow fly. Alright. It is the enemies go now. Axius and Ichabod, as you two start to gather your bearings a bit, you... And as the smoke cloud is slowly starts to, like, defog the area, you two, I would like for you to make perception checks. Well, yeah. So you guys, there's like a bunch of dust and shrapnel in your eye, and you're trying to clear that out so you can't quite see well. Meanwhile, that's a critical hit. So, uh, well, my action would go off before his. If I see what him happens? Get... Yeah. So you, they get closer. So go ahead and make your attack. You at this point, you see. Two horses with one rider on each of them. One of them seems to be holding some kind of weird projectile-looking spear, and another one holding a net. Which one would you like to go after? I'm shooting for the net guy. He shot. All right, make your attack roll. That's a 24 to hit. That hits. Roll your damage. Plus four. Uh, I got 16 on the table. All right. You deal 16 damage. You fire your arrow. And right before this guy with the net tosses his net, you clearly shoot him right in the arm. And he goes, ah! And he completely drops the net as he fails his first attack. 
with the second dice that's crit for the other guy. He said he dropped the net though, right? He dropped the yeah, net. Yeah, he did drop the net. Fuck yeah. I did, I did for, my best, party members. It's up to you guys now. For Ichabod, he got critically hit with this spear-like weapon. So that went. So what happens here... One moment. Ichabod, I would like for you to make a strength save in the meantime while I look up specs for this, because for some reason it's not in not here. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. You. One moment. Okay, here it is. So first off, you take a grand total of thirteen piercing. As you see this weird harpoon-like weapon pierce through you, you're like, "Oh, what the hell is this?" And it starts to tug on you as you see the rider going towards an opposite direction. As it begins to tug on you, you just manage to just uh, just pull. But unfortunately, the, the just the amount of speed and power that this horse is giving just drags you along. At the moment, you're currently prone and are at risk of being dragged. You said 13? 13 points of piercing damage, yes. Okay. All so, right. then... You, Axius, you start to see two more riders. One of them says, Why don't you drop the net? Here's how you do it. He's going to try to toss a net at you. I'm assuming a 12 doesn't hit. Nope. All right. He misses with the net, too, amongst the smoke and what have you. And he spends basically his bonus action just grabbing his net back. And the can other I try one. To grapple it? I mean, if it's right next to me? You could try. So make a strength contest. You get it with advantage. And this guy gets advantage because he's on a mount. So he's using his mount to move. So what you're rolling a strength check? Five. Six. Yeah, 15 on the dice. Unfortunately, you are unable to grapple the net as he is tugging it. So the harpoon guy, set fourth heart. Fourth guy with a harpoon like spear is going to attack you, Axius. With a 19 on the die. That hurts. You, you take 8 points of piercing, reduced to half, 2 4. And I need you to make a strength saving throw. With the do I get advantage? Okay, so you get advantage. You do. Yeah. You do have you advantage, advantage on, on strength checks as long as you're arranging. Yep, yep. That's why it's very good. Dice don't fall. 15. 15, you succeed. Similar to Ichabod, you feel your arm getting pulled back, but your demonic energy just goes, Ugh! and you just pull out this harpoon just out of you. Can I also, have, can I have this rebuke, or is the grabbing the net my uh, reaction? That would be your reaction, bud. Okay, no worries. Unfortunately not. No worries. So, and then that dude's just going to spend just wheeling his harpoon back as a bonus action. And that's going to be it for the riders, Ichabod and Axius. A Axius, you see Ichabod starting to be getting dragged by one of the horses. And Ichabod, you're getting dragged by one of the horses. What would you two like to do as oh, you are acting simultaneously? I well, jump up you guys and are running. Okay, so... Try to so, run up behind the horse. Okay, so go ahead and just make an acrobatics check for me. While he's so doing that, I do want to attack one of the. I want to attack the horse. That that's what that that Ichabod, that I'm, I'm attacking Ichabod's. The people attacking Ichabod, their horse. I'm attacking that horse. Okay, that's fair. Make your attack roll. I got it. What you're rolling at acrobat? You got a twelve. All right. Um. Twenty-four. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ichabod, and then make an athletics check. Because you're trying to jump towards the horse, right? Yeah. All right, make an athletics check. Because with your check, you're able to, like, stand yourself up just a bit. So now I need you to make an athletics check. And another 12. Another 12. You manage to jump on, try to jump on the horse. But, unfortunately, the horse is a little bit faster. Especially since Axius attacked it afterwards. So go ahead and roll your damage against the horse. That is 14 damage. 
14, nice. You s slice the horse up right into its midsection, and blood is just spearing out his unislaxed legs. I have to make a concentration check for the rider, which he succeeds, so he's managed to stay on. I have two attacks. I'm attacking the horse again. All right, make an attack. Fudge. Ten to hit? Ten does not hit, unfortunately. As soon as the horse gets sliced up, and as the rider rebalances, the rider just tugs the horse away from your second attack. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. What do I have to do? I got, I got nothing else. I can't, can't use spells. I'm raging. That's my turn. All right. So then it is the NPC zero. Blue is too sick to help. And they is going to take a shot at the same one you shot, Koto. Wow, of course she fucking rules high. Um, she rolls by the best. Seventeen, which hits. She deals. Oh, seven piercing damage, max damage. Attacking the rider. Ah, hits the rider right in the back. Um, and then she will prepare another attack the next round. Amrin will. Let me look on her character sheet. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see here. She only has one spell slot, which sucks. So I think she would save that. And none of her spells would really help out in her situation. So she is gonna, well, join everyone and attack with the crossbow. And since Axius is near it, if she hits, she'll get sneak attack. With a two, unfortunately, it does not hit. So, fortunately, she misses her shot and spends a bonus action reloading. It is your turn, Kodo. You see the one that's took in two arrows is looking pretty bad. And you see, as the smoke dissipates more, you see a now total of four people. One whose horse is very bad, but is dragging Ichabod. You see another rider with another harpoon. You see the one that you've been attacking and another one of those neck guys. Firing at that horse that's already taken a lot of blows. Try to stop All him right. from dragging off at Ichabod. All right, attack roll. That'd be an 18 to hit. How would you like to kill this horse? Straight through the eye. All right. You shoot the horse right through the eye, and the, you can see the rider. He's like, oh shit, oh shit. And then he has to make an acrobatic dexterity saving throw. I'm sorry, which but he Peter's fails. Gonna find this. So he falls off his horse prone. Peter's gonna find this episode. <laughs> he got nothing on us. <laughs> so the rider whose horse has been attacked falls prone because he fails his deck save to stay on his mount. Um. Anything else we would like to do? Yeah, I'm going to shoot the guy that I've been shooting at. All right. Attack roll. It's like a 26 to hit. How, would he, how does he die? Uh, through the uh, Arrow through the throat so he can't alert anyone else. All right. He goes, Ugh, oh, uh, <laughs> and he's just coughing out blood, and he just falls off his mount. And Third. the mount. Third. The mount? What happens to the mount? Well, go ahead. Well, it's not their turn yet, so go ahead. I was going to say the, the second net guy that tried to throw a net at Axius. He's going to get my, my key shot. Yep. All right. Ah, miss. 14. That guy. Whoa! Uh, uh. M movement, anything? No, I'm staying where I'm at. So let's go back to that horse. Yeah, the horse, back to the horse starts panicking and kicking because all around him, but not in the way where like it's being aggressive. It's just in a scare state, and it just gallops away. The rider whose horse has fallen spends half his movement getting up, and Ichabod, you see him, says, Let, let's get the hell out of here. Let's cut our losses. He then takes the knife and just cuts the rope harpoon that was attached to you. And he's going to halt ass to the guy with the net. And then the guy with the net is going to disengage and run. And the guy whose horse mounted fell 
jumps on the horse, and they ride away. We're still an initiative roll? Yeah, I was going to say, Ichabod for this, and for this get some For this round, shots. yes. So this would be the last round. So Ichabod and Axius, what would you like to do? Ichabod, you're currently prone with a harpoon in your Wait, you don't get opportunity attacks? He disengaged as an action. Okay. Um, oh, are they, they used disengage? One of them, yeah, they used disengage and got the fuck out of there. Are any of them within 25 feet? Um... Let me look up the horse horse's speed real quick. 60. One sec. Let me just double check. Because these aren't like the best mounts, but these aren't terrible mounts. Right, the, the, mounts have 40. the guy that was cutting my rope is he on foot and within 25 feet of me. At this point, he's hopped on the horse and is uh, galloping away. I would say they're about 30 feet away from you guys. How fast is the horse? The horse is 40 feet. My elk is we'll say 40 feet. feet. I'm going to try to blowgun him. <laughs> nice. Okay. The horse, the guy, or... <laughs> yes, yes, the horse. Oh, the yeah. horse. Eat up. All right. Eat up. I'm going to roll it with disadvantage, because if they're up 25 feet or farther away, it's disadvantage for me with the blowgun. All right. Let's see if it holds, let's see if it works or not. And this is with the drow dart. A 17 and a 16. 16 plus... That hits the horse. 22. <laughs> yep. So the horse <laughs> takes a piercing damage. Now he has to make a con save. Oh, That's a four. 5, so he fails. <laughs> so the horse, you see it gallop away. And as it gallops away, Ichabod. And it hits it right on the horse's ass. <laughs> and you just see the horse just cry out and shout, Ooh! and then just falls. The riders and the passenger has to make dexterity saving throws. One of them fails, one of them succeeds. The guy who was riding the horse jumps off. The guy that unfortunately has now fallen off the second horse in his pro. Now I get two attacks. Do I get two attacks with my blowgun? You do. Or you can I just run up and hit him. But yeah. Stand up to 15 feet. Yep. Run my extra 15 feet to get closer so I don't have disadvantage with the blowgun. Uh -huh. yep. I will shoot at the one that did make the deck save. Okay. Ah, cool. Using my rainbow dice. <laughs> Go ahead. Go do that, bro. Uh, 13 and 7 is 20. That hits. Roll damage. Well, con save. It's it's a put four damage piercing. Yep. The guy fails a con know. save. As he is starting to like gather his senses, he gets hit in the rib. Goes Ugh! Ugh! and just. I shoot him in the butt. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Axius, oh. would you like to kill? <laughs> Axius, would you like to kill things now? <laughs> Um, just paint. so there's just one guy left, or is there two? How many you guys? So there's here? one guy who is laying down prone. Yeah. That fell off the horse, and there's mm -hmm. one guy who is laying down that is unconscious with the drow there. So there's just and okay. the horse is unconscious too. How and two far? riders. There's two riders. Yeah. Where did two riders there's go? The, there's the rider, and then the guy who hopped on the horse. The guy who hopped on the horse is on the ground prone, and then the one that. Ichabod just hit with the dart, fell unconscious, and the horse itself is also unconscious. So what would you like to do? And they're 30 feet away. Okay, I have a 30 foot movement speed. Uh, the one cool. who wasn't hit by the blow dart is getting Axe. recklessly swatted at. <laughs> Don't even reckless. You get advantage because he's prone. <laughs> well, just like, just like for flavor's sake, I am not... I am oh, sure. <laughs> uh, that's Go a 26 ahead, to hit. Oh yeah, that definitely hits him. So go ahead and roll damage. Quick question. Um can I use Divine Smite and Rage? Um that's a really good question. I believe yeah. you can. Uh, it's a magical ability, not a magical spell. So yeah. So just double check real quick, because oh. I never that's a great question. Maybe we'll all it learn is. something today. But... Yeah, you can use both. Why not? I'll rule it. 
Seems cool with me. Yeah, um, it's a magical ah! ability. <laughs> let me pump. Let me just pump a first level spell. A divine smite. So sure. let me just roll the slashing damage first. I can get him. Mm -hmm. This is so awesome. That's 15 slashing damage plus 2d8. This is just my first attack. I still have one more. Oh, yeah. Plus another 11 damage, so that's 24 damage total. Yeah, you chop him up. He's looking really, really bad. He goes, ah! And as you pull the blade from him, you can see like some of his intestines are starting to come out of it. It's, ah, ah, ah. And he's just like looking and it's like in the shock and fear moment as you are about to swing with your second attack. I just have like a shit-eating, like, demonic shit -eating grin on me as I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, next attack with advantage. Ooh, uh, 23 to hit? Sure. Full damage. Four... 14 damage? Yeah. How does he die? I just, I disembowel him. <laughs> it's, it's a slow, painful death. This is... Because you said his intestines are already open, so I just like make another X mark and it just spills out. It's like seppuku, like Japanese samurais I used to do. His Jesus intestines Christ. just like just just yeah. spilling out slowly. Yeah. There are guts all over the place. This guy is shrieking in terror and in torture, and so much so that he just passes out before like you could do as much damage as you can. And then as like. The party starts to like gather together. You just see like just like a pile of guts and blood right next to a horse. We are painting this mountain red. <laughs> and that concludes combat. So I'm gonna change music real quick. Oh. Nope. As you do that, I pull the thing out and then second wind to get some hit points back. <laughs> sure, you can do that. That's smart. I'm gonna go out of rage. Okay. I. The horse is asleep right now. Is that it's what's unconscious yeah, right now? There's a uh, horse that's unconscious and one guy that's unconscious because of the blow darts. Yep. Okay. I'm going to. Go um, freaking kill that dude that's on the ground. You want to kill him or you want to interrogate him? Nah, it's up to you. You better get to him before me because I'm killing him. I'm going to go take my rope and tie him up. Okay. You tie him up. There's no say if he's unconscious or whatnot. How do you tie it? Is a question. Uh, I'm going to tie his wrists to his ankles behind his back. Okay. Nice. Hog tie. So cow tie. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm a hog tie. You do that. And he wakes up as soon as you're finished. He's like, ah, what, what the hell? Ugh. And he's trying to struggle with us, unfortunately. I'm going to tie no. the other end of it to my elk. Sure. And make sure oh, he's aware no. of what's about to happen if he does it, you know. <laughs> it's a, what, the, what the hell is that thing? You don't have to worry about that. What we need to know Shit. is why we were attacked. Uh, oh, I'm not going to tell you shit, tiefling. I telepathically tell my elk to go take a ride. Say I start running behind backwards to us. Uh, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do laps wait, around wait, us for a bit. I roll him up and I pull the dart out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, and this elk is just like driving this dude in circles and circles. Weirdly enough, you do hear a bunch of like bear traps going off too. And as oh. such, you hear, ah! and then at some moments the elk even gets hurt at some point. The elk takes seven damage from overall all the traps and whatnot. Okay, I'm gonna stop him then. That's half his <laughs> You half just stop, stop him then, right? <laughs> uh, right. Stop the elk. You just I'm see not gonna... you. What's go up? No, I go said, ahead. I... is the horse conscious yet? No. Okay, I. Is it. Does it have like reins and whatnot on it? Yes. Alright, I'm gonna grab its reins. I'm gonna try to wake it up and then I'm gonna cast Speak on Animals. I'm gonna leave the dude alone for now. You take it off, the horse slowly starting to wake up, and then you cast Speak with Animals. What do you do? How far did you travel to meet us here? The horse, like, gets up, and it's just, like, shaking his head off. And he's just sir, sir, looking at everyone in the situation, and he says, 
Oh, well, I don't know. I'm just coming from camp. They feed me. And How I far is right camp? Uh, I don't know. Some ways that way. What the hell is that? As he looks like your elk. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that right now. Can you show us where your camp is? And we will let you live. Make a persuasion check. To an animal, to a horse. But I'm speaking in his language. 21. Never mind. 21. 21. <laughs> if you give me some food, then maybe I can lead you to camp. Of course. Uh, everywhere, isn't there? <laughs> I will see. Let me see. I said I have to still have a one day ration. Yep, I do. <laughs> I give him right. a one day ration. He just like. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Okay. When do we go? I'm gonna oh, loot the bodies and the fallen horse. Looking through sure. the saddlebags, I'm looking through the pockets. I'm also collecting sure. my arrows. Sure. And they will also and somewhere Amron. Um ah! excuse me. You find you find a weird harpoon gun like weapon. Um, apparent, like, what's weird about it is that, like, these kind of harp, like, you know, harpoons exist because it's used for, like, fishing or what have you. So it's quite strange that you find, like, a device that shoots, like, this type of projectile that is proud, that is, like, quite, quite intuitive, I must say. And, like, your question comes from, wait, why is this dude shooting harpoons to where, like, Hmm, this just seems like a quite interesting type of weapon. Slavers. That and you That's find two nets. Two nets. And some... Let me tell you what type of armor this is. One moment. You also find... You also find four sets of leather armor. Uh, we don't need that. It's just going to weigh us down. Any gold or food? Um, one, about four rations. No gold. So you, you can already got it amongst all. yourselves or what have you. I bring it back to Ichabod. As he was doing this stuff with the horse and he's been making sure everyone's fed. I bring him the rations. <laughs> Show him the, the two nets. I don't think we should keep these. I'm not proficient with them. And we need to pack light so we can move quickly. Yeah, this it's... weird oh. harpoon gun thing it might fetch a good price. I think maybe we should keep it just to, to barter with. It's, we have a horse now. Let's get we the do, but we have someone injured. Yeah, they free up Ichabod so he can ride his mount. I believe they are better if Ichabod is riding his mount. And if we have this horse, Axe. we can put blue on the horse. Do you agree? Yeah. Axios, what are you doing in this situation? Your mount is I'm still in... tied with this dude. Or this I'm, giving the horse. I'm giving the horse over to Anaya first. Um, okay, and take some Let me keep this as clean as possible. Are these guys wearing socks? The ones that we killed? Yes. I'm going to take one of their socks from their foot. I'm going to go back to the guy who's hogtied. I'm going to jam it in his mouth, take whatever length of rope left to tie it around to gag him rather than what I really want to do. Yeah, you could gag him. And then I'm going to mount my elk and look at Amryn to get on behind me. She gets on behind you. Cool. And then as soon as everyone's ready, I think the horse that Anaya has is going to lead us to the camp. So we're going to follow. You're just going to drag the, the speak guy with, behind you? How long does speak with animals last? Uh, yes, I'm letting him drag behind me. Uh, let me check. <laughs> speak with animals last for 10 minutes. So during the last of time with your speak with animals, 
Um, while you're doing all this, like, everyone's gathering around, gathering shit, what have you. We'll say it takes about oh, ten minutes. Um, the horse says before the spell ends, says, I'll lead you to there, but, um, there could be some traps there. I don't know where they hit it, but I'm gonna lead you to it the same way I came. Thank you. We won't kill you. So, promise. We, uh, I'll at least untie the guy's feet so he can walk. No, 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 uh, I'm not Blue, caring what they say. Blue's, Blue's sick as a dog. I mean, yeah. Anaya is like cool of riding like an actual competent horse, and Amron's just like in that at talking to Blue. Yeah, Bo, the so, guy's getting dragged to death. <laughs> excuse me. Sorry, everyone. I have a bad cough. Um, That's all so good, man. So for the next, for the next thirty to forty minutes, you guys. Follow this horse. And so horses are not dumb creatures, but they're not as smart. So at one instance, the horse goes in this direction and then like turns around and goes in a separate direction only to turn around to go back. Though it takes actually a little bit longer because, you know, it's a horse that is leading you all. And after some time, you do trigger some traps that you're, that like this dude's drag, like trap and one of them being a pit trap um but this pit trap is intricate in that it seems that this pit trap has like rolled spikes that go downward so kind of like in this motion with spikes so at some point he gets stuck do you help him get unstuck or would you like oh, to no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna uh hold my, my hand to axius and i cut the rope and just leave the guy there sure he goes oh and like it just slowly like goes down into like this weird pit. Yeah. So I was more worried about Axius than the guy. I don't want Axius to get dragged just because this guy's getting turned into meat grinder. <laughs> yeah. All right, Koto. At this point, because you are like the survivalist expert and you would know about traps and such, just yeah, go you ahead want me and a roll survival, survival check for me. Do what I get know, uh, like, what... advantage. For what? Knowing the area. Knowing where is... I would put the traps. No. Go ahead and make it a... Look, I'm always going to ask for advantage. Two. Okay. Eight. I wrote an eight. These? Like, you've seen, like, common traps, like pitfall traps, sometimes with spikes, sometimes with not. You know, those tie rope traps and even log traps. These traps are more mechanical and machine-like, so you're not too sure of It would what. make sense that I would not know where they're going. I got yeah, it. Where they're going or how they work or how they disable, you aren't sure. So that's just something to keep your toes off of. Yeah. We need to go slow. I'm not sure of these, these traps. I'm more used to uh, counterbalance and, and gravity rope traps. These are way more complicated. We need to move slow and proceed. I relay the message to Anaya, who's in front with the horse. Okay. She acknowledges. She says, oh, all right, I'll go slow. And then, like, she tugs on the reins to indicate to go slow. Um, don't mind me. I'm just prepping some dice just in case. Um, here. Okay. We'll continue. You guys move forward amongst the tracks now at a more slower pace um i would like you three to make perception checks at this point got a 19 11 got a 14 14 and then naya's the deciding roll then she's leading she rolled a 60. So, majority succeed. She indicates, wait, stop! And then the group stops. And what you see along the path 
is well, based on your perception checks, that this is possibly a trap. However, what Anea says is, I gotta look up this. Hold on, referring to my notes, friends. One moment. Okay. So she points out that the ground that had that like forms this path it looks strange in comparison to the rest of the dirt and rocky terrain you guys have been seeing. And based on your crisis current circumstances, you're in these hilllands. So like there's moments where you're coming across high hills and low hills and what have you. So this is like into like a choke point to where like you have no choice but to go through. And she points out this, this ground doesn't look right. All right, I'm going to look for a stick. So I can I start see. I can start you know, prodding the the ground looking for this the traps. Okay. You are prodding the ground with such sticks. And doing so... Hold on. I'm just reading. Like, I don't have a really twig. Carefully. You know, the trap's not right, going to drop on my face. I, trust me, there's sticks to find in these lands, so... Yeah, you're, okay. And you're very competent of finding such sticks. Um, yeah, You I... start poking around, and you see... Uh, you see part of the ground give way and you poke and you're in front of the group and we'll just say that it's 10 feet wide. You start poking the ground and you see like this middle part, uh, just a doorway that just gives out at that point. As soon as the doorway, as the doorway is like pulling out, you just see spikes starting to pop like, tss, and you look down and there's like a spike pit. And this pit is not only taking out most of the room of this choke point, but it's at least 15 feet away as this door just activates. All right. I'm going to scoot around this okay. trap that I just set off, and I'm still poking at the ground as I go. Okay. I mean, even so if we have to get... move, you know, two, three feet at a time, I'd rather, okay. you know, look and make sure we don't get hit. All right, you scoot, you're poking your way around and such. Um, you get past the 15-foot pit, Koto, and then you start poking around more. And, okay, so I just need clarification before I move forward. You're coming off the wall from the 15-foot path. Where are you poking it? Poking in the dirt. In front of you, left, right. Yeah, I'm doing like left. I'm I'm basically sweeping from the left to right. Okay. All right. I'm doing like an so, S pattern. You know, I I poke these spots. I move another one, two feet. Poke a lot more spots. Move another one or two feet. And as you move those one or two feet, make a deck save. got a 21 on the table nice so you're poking your way you're poking your way like okay you're taking your step taking your step as you take your next step a circle pit like gives way to enough to like you know place your foot through you're like oh shit so you step away from it and as you look down it's just like spikes that go downward that could have been catastrophic because if you would have put your foot down there it would be very hard to get out Okay, choo, choo, I continue. <laughs> All right. Slowly so but surely. Left, you poke left, right, left, right. Axius, Iron, Ichabod. What are you two doing while you see Koto avoiding traps? Um. Uh, go ahead. I, I'm just sitting on my elf with my wife, just, just watching. Okay. 
Pick a bug. I'll start sc scanning the ground. Crowd. Ground. Perception check. Yeah, I'll try to roll this one. I'll actually give you a low. Natural one. 20. <laughs> for 25. Yeah. So, you're looking... You're kind of spotting Koto just, like, making sure, like, he knows what he's doing, of course. You know, because of traps, it can be very dangerous. And so far, Koto is doing a good job. What you do see further ahead of him as he, like, avoids, like, the leg trap, you see that the walls further ahead are in a different shade of color. It's not so much as a different shade where it's, like, it's clearly a trap, but it's, like, all discoloration to make it look like an illusion like effect on it towards the tail end of this choke point I'll try to step where he stepped move up behind him and point at the wall I think it's a trap okay. you notice this now Koto I'm gonna walk up the side of the, the wall and get above the trap and start poking it with the stick you poke the trap with the stick as you do so you notice that the debris that this wall was made to look like it was like one piece. But as you start poking product, you see like a bunch of parts move around, indicating that this is like not one part of the wall, but this could be a trap where like it could collapse. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. and How much debris is it? Is it enough that we can still go over it? After I trigger the trap? You aren't too sure, but you do know there is a lot of it to where it could possibly kill someone. It's like that much with the weight and the rocks and what have you. Yeah, I'm going to trigger the trap. I mean, I'm safe. I'm going to trigger right. the trap. You I can walk the on the. I can walk on the wall, so I can get into a good position where I can trigger the trap. But it, yeah. All right. You well, you're way the back there. Yeah, he hasn't even crossed yet. So yeah. you trigger the trap and it starts to give way. What is your strength modifier? It's uh eleven. But I mean eleven? How I I have this the slippers of spider climb, so I could be on the side of the, the wall and I'm just okay. poking at it. Okay. You start poking at it, half the debris falls over. But it's mainly like the top bits where, you know, there's a lot like smaller and looser rock and it just gives way. And as it gives way, you notice that the ground of which it would have fallen onto, um, you could see like after like the dust is clearly settled, you see like a bunch of triggers are in front of like this section of where this rock placement could stay. Indicating like, hey, if anyone crosses up beyond this point, rocks will fall. Yeah, so the trap is triggered. Is it blocking our way now, or can we... This part of the wall is blocking the way. So, like, half of... So, like, again, and this is what you two also notice, that it's on both sides of this choke point. So you just knock off one of the sides of the choke point. All right, well, I'm going to move to the, the next side. Walk okay. up the side of the wall again and poke, 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 poke with the stick. All right, same deal. I mean, above table, we don't have a rogue. I mean, I, I have no idea how to look for the, the trigger mechanisms for this shit. Yeah. Poke it with the stick. <laughs> <laughs> poke it with the stick. Uh, um, so again, same result, but on the opposite end. So you get, so you get the feeling, um. Make a intel general intelligence check for me. Oh, so I'm cool. great at this. Yeah. Four. Rock, rock spelled down, so trap should be safe. Is what you think to yourself. Fuck. I, I, I look back with no confidence on my face, and I give the thumbs up. <laughs> 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 All right. And I'm I gonna start. I'm still on. 
What was that? Your so mic's cutting in and out. Oh. Where I'm standing at, can I do an investigation check? To search for these triggers? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Twenty-four. Actual nice. twenty. So you are looking so like you're on your knees like, oh, where is this trigger? And you're slowly you know, you're being careful because of like what could happen. And as you get closer and closer, you're like, where is this? Where is this? And then as you look around, you boop, your nose hits what seems like to be some sort of fishing lure that is invisible to the naked eye, especially with during this circumstance. You're like, oh, this is clearly the top, the rope or the trigger that would happen. So Fair you have point. found said trigger. Yep, basically. Well, like, follow it down. If it's going down and along the ground, I'm seeing where it's anchored at. Okay. So as you are looking left and right, you do see that it is anchored down towards... Turn on my notes here, folks. You see that it is anchored at three points. You see that it is anchored amongst the corners of each of the current walls that you see like a little hook notch that is latched into the ground and you see like very at the center point uh, it seems like to be a more looser kind of notch in the center of the ground. Um, you get the idea based on your intelligence check that if you do trip on this it could possibly give way to some kind of mechanism that would cause the rest of these rocks to fall. And then can I follow up to where it's like what it's latched to to make the rocks fall if it's tripped on? Sure. So you follow the wire to one of the sides and you see that the wire goes like straight into like an angle part and into this angle part it goes basically within the rocks themselves indicating like okay there's probably some kind of mechanism that would launch these rocks into this yeah. sector or pull the pin to make the rocks fall yep but if i cut the cut the fishing line it goes slack it won't pull the pin that's what you think makes sense so i like snip you cut it yeah you cut it. You see some of the fishy lord give way, but nothing happens. Okay. Hey, right, I'm gonna continue through the choke point, walking on the side of the wall. Congratulations, you went through the choke point, Koto. So is there a clear path for the mounts now? That's a great question. Um, no. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Because they're just generally too big, and most of these traps either take up one big space of the path or several small spaces beyond the path. And obviously with, like, the, the rock situation, like, you're about to get over that, but getting there is going to be a challenge. Alright, I'm gonna get off my mouth then, and just motion for Amber to get off of it. Okay, she gets off. Alright, I'm gonna go... Go give him a big old go embrace him by its head, and then my totem that's on my necklace is gonna glow, and his soul's gonna be just tra not trapped but encapsulated in that totem. All right, he bursts into flames, and then he goes into the totem. And then also when that happens, I just look like uh, what is it, a tiefling version of like Beast from X Men. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Right. I guess we're letting the horse go, so I'll help Blue off. Alright. You go back, you help Blue off. How far is this, um... How far is the gap from the pit to where Koto is? So, code, so like, this overall choke point is 50 feet forward, and you do know of you watching Koto that there is this 15-foot-long, like, long, rectangular pit trap that is, like, right in front of the chasm, and then 
Koto indicated that there are several hole traps that would trap your feet, and then the rock trap. Alright, um... I don't have good investigation. I don't. I can't take the lead on this one. Uh, I mean, it's clear. Is it? All right. right yeah. I just saw the trap. I set up all the traps. Yep. All right. I cautiously. I'm just gonna. I'm going to motion to Ana that I'm going in front. I'm just gonna cautiously walk. Like, Koda pointed these out, so it's not a big issue. So, you shimmy around the pit trap. You then see, like, the many holes that Koda poked into. Um, You know, with these, like, spikes that go downward, and you go around that. And you know Ichabod cleared that trap, so you just get over whatever debris lays on there. And congratulations, you went through the checkpoint. But here's the bigger question, what are you going to do with the horse? Above it, it go. All right. Um, I'm gonna set it free. I'm gonna take the reins off of it. I'm gonna set it on free. All right. It licks you, and then it licks Anaya before it gallops away. Oh. Thing we don't need food. <laughs> and you guys been, make it, and one by one, days. one by one, you guys make it through the choke point. And since I'm way up there, I've been not moving and just overwatching. Have I seen any movement ahead? Do I see this "quote unquote" campsite Make that Axie's talked check. about? I get a perception check with advantage. No. And twenty-one. You do not see, luckily, any movements further ahead. However, you do see, which would probably take you the rest of the day, probably till sunset, because this is midday, that there is a camp. And you're like, that's a town of Lork, further ahead. However, Lork, at least at a glance, further away, looks a little bit more different than you remembered, because you don't see, in particularly, you don't see stone walls around Lork that much. That's like the newish thing that you've noticed. You being local to the So area. we see the campsite before we get to Vlork? You see you see the town of Lork itself because like you've been traversing this whole time on horse right. track, so distance is cut short. I thought the horse toward Axius and Axius toward us that there was a campsite be that the horse was taking us to. Maybe the horse thinks the Lork is the campsite. Oh. Is that yeah, it? Keep in mind keep in mind, horses are not as smart, so like he would probably take you to what he would consider a campsite. So Okay. Okay. So but you do see the town of Lork and you notice that it has stone walls all around it, which wasn't there the last time you went there. Yeah, but that was what, ten, fifteen years ago? Probably. You know is that it was a mining town and it wouldn't make sense for miners to keep it closed because of like dangerous conditions but there's walls there it's quite strange well i mean the whole world has changed that is true that being said you have this information cut up uh, i wait until people get caught up to me okay. i point out and i relay the information telling them you know the last time i was through here those stone walls are new Oh, we're in daylight. All right. And slowly start moving. All right. Uh, guys, big. Yes. When, when I see everyone's through, uh, Axius, how many times can you summon your mount? It would be easier to move blue if we had your mount. I look at my totem, um, and I summon him again. A ball of fire just fires from this totem, and there he appears. I can never get used to that. <laughs> Pull out a marshmallow real quick, try to toast it on the fire. <laughs> yeah, and then right. 
loose right on the mountain again, and then we're going. Yep. Yep, slowly moving. All right. Everyone makes stealth checks for me as you are getting closer and closer to Lork at a slower pace. So can we get advantage because of the slower pace? Mm, no. You're just making general stealth checks because you're in rocky terrain, so it's not the quietest terrain. 17. Okay. 13. 23. You said 13, Axios? Yeah, I said 13. Okay. And Anaya and Amran passed theirs. As you get closer and closer to Lork, the sun is setting, and you guys, I will say, are about 50 feet away from it. Now I want everyone to make a perception check. Fifteen. Okay. Twenty-two. Nice. Nine. Wow. Coming from you, that's something. I wrote a three. Okay. <laughs> All right, major majority succeeds thanks to Aaron and Anaya. Um, I wonder what makes me sneeze. Go to Albert Rodeo. Dead realms. Above map. So, like to thank, I and I might pronounce this wrong. Inspiration, inspires Sean eighty six. I apologize for butchering the name, but they're the original creators of this map. Go support them on Patreon and as for this lovely map. So what you see 50 feet away as you get on one of the hilltops, um, you see clearly that well, you don't see these guys, so I'm going to get, get rid of them for a second because you're too far away. Um, <laughs> you guys see three main watchtowers one that is on the entrance and one that is on the sides. Um, just with your all general intuition and you like perceiving the area, you guys notice that there are three archers keeping watch of this town of Lork. And Lork is a small mining town um, known for, of course, mining gold. Used to be known for, by the dwarves for, you know, mine, mining and what have you. But they had, before the apocalypse, anyway, um, relations of them trying to share the mind with the humans and then they started conflict and then who knows what happened after that but in this new world it seems like this area is walled off and there are three people with keeping watch with their bows all around the area and you guys are 50 feet away and you do see this and from your direction we'll say let me roll the right here tell you which direction your guys will be coming from so you guys would be coming from this general direction as you see it. You're seeing basically this direction, but you're noticing this tower here, this tower here, this tower here. Clearly have someone on guard with lanterns, of course, um, lighting up their general vicinities. So it's not they're not blind, but they're not at full awareness. So you guys are about 50 feet away stealth from them. That being said, what would you like to do? Your tokens are not on the board yet, but as you get closer, they'll be on it. And keep in mind, this map is not scale. So, like, a traditional five feet with the ruler is not true five feet. So I'll let you know how far you can get from that. That being said, floor is all you, boys. I'll move up ten feet and announce myself. Oh, I'm... As soon as I see any, he's going to do that, I duck behind the rock. I get my bow okay. ready. Okay. Axios? Uh, I am... Axios, what are you doing? going to stand in front of Ichabod and literally brace myself just in case there's an arrow coming. Okay. <laughs> I realize I'm the beefier of the two, so... Well, okay. Well, I know if an arrow flies, three are flying back at him, so... I announced they myself wanna... Ichabod Ionized, the clan Ionized, eighth generation blacksmith from out of Iron Hill. I would like to speak to your leaders, if possible. Okay. Those fun points. Put you two on the board there. Um, we'll say Blue is... Due to the seriousness of the circumstances, Blue is, like, held back a bit, laying on, nearby your mount axis. We'll say that. Um, two of these archers point bows at you. Make a perception check. Oh, 
Persuasion check, excuse me. How, how far away are they? Wait, what's happening now? Is it perception? He went persuasion, persuasion check. I meant to say persuasion. Right. So I'm not wrong. Can I, get a, can I get a perception check since I'm not out there trying to be friendly? Sure, got an so, 18. Okay, so Koto, go ahead and make your perception. You said perception check, right? That you wanted to make? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So make your perception check with this because you guys are fifty feet away and let's see. I get that with the advantage? Please I get that with the advantage. Make a regular roll because you kinda see light, so you're not totally blind. So make a regular roll. Because you're I a wrote a one. Yeah. Um you just notice like clearly you see that there's a guy there and you could kind of see this guy, but that's really it. They're within range, so if you yep. start shooting arrows, I'm gonna mm -hmm. Turn them into pin cushions, but All I'm gonna right. let them try to be civil. But I know these lands, and these lands are not civil. The guy then says, "Why should we let you talk to our leader like that? You're not you're trespassing on our lands. Leave now, and you might be spared from even worse." I have my family has never been treated like this coming here, being blacksmiths and trading with the dwarves. Is this a dwarvish person? Or no. can I you tell by his voice? You getting closer, you notice that this dude's human. How tall is this um, wall? This wall is 25 feet. The tower being 5 feet more than that. Okay, so 30 feet is the tower? Uh, I guess. Just making a mental note. Okay. So, you say this, and, you're, and the archer then says, Ah, you're a blacksmith, huh? Hmm. What do you know about mining? I know metal comes out. Um... Yeah, no shit. What else do you know? I know my family history of making the finest weapons and arrows around. Make a persuasion check. I already did an 18. <laughs> Do another one. <laughs> uh -oh. Natural 20 for 21. You make good arrows, huh? Hmm. Shall I show you? <laughs> Yes, but drop all your weapons, and actually, are you keeping yourself hitting us or no? Oh, I said I was in front of him. <laughs> <I was just laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. All right, I'm so staying hidden. Said, gotcha. I just have to say anything. I'm literally okay, just okay, bracing. Okay, okay, okay. Just making sure. Um, he says, "Drop your weapons, and only you come towards the gates. Make us these fine arrows that you." say you are good at making and if the boss thinks they're good enough then maybe we'll let you and your friend in but if they're not up to snuff well then you'll be joining the rest in the mines oh I so much wanted to put say Kodo send him an arrow but no I won't do that I'll walk over to Leia Grab an arrow out of her quiver because she's got some of mine. Sure. I'll uh, drop the long sword, and walk up okay. and hand him to him. Okay, so you walk right. up. Wait, isn't he in the tower? Yeah. yeah. You go up here and he says, "You could just drop those there, and then walk towards the gates." the gate. Yeah. What is the rest of everyone doing as Ichabod is going towards the gate? As Ichabod is going through the gate, Kodo, you see that they are keeping one of the, You could... We'll make a perception check because this is important. Advantage? No. Nine. You see this guy clearly pointing 
at Ichabod as he is traversing. You don't know where this guy is pointing at because, like, it's it's not like you're in total darkness, but you can barely see this guy based on distance and lighting and what have you. But you, but you do said know this guy. It's lighting, and I'm in a dark area, so that's you're fifty like, feet away. For... Yeah, you're fifty. So, yeah, he has backlight where he's at, so it'd be easy to spot in the dark. That's why he's like, he weren't asking for advantage. Ah, I see. So, in that case, he's lit up like a, a floodlight, man. I I see it. So whole this away. guy, this guy here. You yeah. clearly see that he's pointing at Ichabod. Yeah, got that. And this guy's pointing at something, but based on your role, you're not too sure whether he's pointing at Ichabod or Axius, because that would make sense. Yeah. It's all right. So, Ichabod, you go towards the gate. Okay. Axius, you're doing anything or no? It's, what time of day is it? Is it too It's is night it time. Yes. It's, it's nighttime. We keep on moving at night. We sleep during the yeah. day and we move at night. That's how we've and been doing it. And moved at a slow pace too. So, yeah, that's how we've been doing it this this whole time. We decided before we started traversing the mountain to do that. All right. So you get to this gate. Once. And it... uh, I'm not. This is. Uh, can I? Uh, Anaya can't see me. How far they? How far is the NPCs from me? The NPCs are. Let's see, we'll say they're twenty feet away. Alright, well, Anaya can't see in dark vision, but I'm going to motion over for Amran to bring Anaya. And I'm going to try to have Anaya us go with Ichabod into the town. No, they just said me. You guys are all yeah, I, yeah. If, I, if I see all that, I'm going to try to whisper to him, like, no, they just said one. I got my arrow trained on the guy above the gate. Okay. It moves weird, and I, I will drop him. Don't worry. Ichabod, you move towards the gate and coming from... You can see that this guy has his arrow on you for a second and then you hear a whistle coming as he, he turns away, whistles and as he whistles you start to see on the opposite end of the tower a lantern come up and boop! He's like... He says, why are you waking me up? There's someone at the gate. He says he knows how to make arrows. All right, I'll open the gate. And then you see the dude just like turning the crank and you see the stone door just going upward as he is currently turning it. Do you walk through it? No. I said I'd meet them out at the gate. Nothing about going in. All right. So he opens the gates. And... You know, he this guy positions, locks it in place. He says, all right, I'll go get the boss now. And he goes to get the boss. What is everyone else doing while this is going on? I'm going to speak to Amron in Inferno. I was like, could you cast Fog Cloud if things get uh, go south? Just to get Ichabod out. Of course. Where do you want me to place this? At the gate. She will hold a casting of fog cloud. If you throw the fog cloud right in front of us, I can simply walk up the side of the wall and start taking out the archers. Wait, how far are we from the gate? Don't take out anyone. Axius is 30. Hold on, let me see. Measurements. Axius, you are 30 feet away from the gate. Everyone else is 20 feet behind you and back. Let me just go to Aaron's character sheet. So this will take up her last spell slot, so she could no longer cast spells for now, and as she preps a fog cloud spell at the gate. After some brief time, Ichabod, you see the leader come up to you with lantern in hand, and this guy is a leader. You can tell that he's a lot more beefier in comparison to the rest of his troop, which just look average. And you could tell that he means business. But, but weirdly enough, he has a black lab right next to him. But not in a nice way, but in a, like, 
you know, ready to pounce kind of attack. Guy here. And he says to you, so you think that you could make a good arrow and decide to wake me up in the middle of the night for this? Well, we're trying to get to safety because there's a bunch of undead orcs and hordes and a giant coming this way. <laughs> well, I can make arrows and we for fighters we just need to uh, if you have a cleric or a holy man here we'd like to talk to him too there is no holy man there we killed him about two three weeks ago after stealing food but if it's safety you want you have to show everyone here and prove yourself what good use you can be Otherwise, you're stuck in the mines with the others. Now, from what I've heard, you are a blacksmith, and you could craft good arrows. And if you can craft good arrows, that'll be much to our benefit. However, I would say you're, are, well, you better impress me because I've seen what some of my workers can create, and they can create very interesting things. So I want to see if you could differentiate yourselves from a common blacksmith to a master one. I, I hand him my family arrow with our little symbol. He looks at it. On the, and... on the tip. The yeah, he looks eyes. at it. Yep. <laughs> Throws the arrowhead. He says, in this world, symbols don't mean shit, friend. It's all about skill. Now, how about you come and prove yourselves? Otherwise, you could fuck off. Well, then I guess we'll fuck off, and I turn to walk away. <laughs> Good. And then, at this point, he says, Close the gates! And then the gate closes behind you violently as you are leaving. What do the rest of you do? Turn on shooting at the bottom of the back. <laughs> Yep. I'm sorry. My I had a lot of like internet connection problems there. Say again. I'm sorry. Just looking at the archers on the towers, making sure nobody shoots like a bot in the back. Okay. Yeah. You see, make a perception check. Axis. I'm assuming you walk back towards the group, Ichabod. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen. What you roll? Fifteen. Yeah, both of these got arrows. Both of these archers have their arrows trained on Ichabod as he is leaving. Work. All right. I mean, as soon as Ichabod gets back, I guess I'm gonna just ask the group. It's like, all right. So, how many times did he say that they are holding people at the mines? Do we free them? I don't know. They, they, said they, they killed their healer, or they killed the healer in here. So I'm more worried about finding someone that can read this scroll to save Blue. He's not yeah, getting any better. In the mines. And anyways, every time every time you said if I didn't prove myself, I'd be working in the mine, which means they're just gonna put us in the mines no matter what to work. All of us. No, I'm saying we go slaughter them and free the miners. <laughs> well, I saw the leader, his dog, and four other guys stand or three other guys standing behind him. And the only other three we've seen are the guys in the watchtower. Yeah, dog is too. Can, none of them. Dog is too the greasy. I mean, we can kill the dog, but I don't want to eat dog. Why would you? And A says, "Why would you eat a dog?" I told you they're too greasy. I don't want to eat the dog. Ugh. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> we well, are tired. Our spellcasters are. Out of spells. 
this would be a difficult fight. I'm not saying that we should pass up a, a place that we can rest for the night, but it would be a difficult fight to get this rest for the night. We know that they have been sending people out and trying to capture people. I think that's what the, the four writers were trying to do, is to grab people and take them in here and put them to work in the mines. So it will make this area safer if we take this place out. But again, it will be a difficult fight. I don't think that we will lose. I'm just stating that any of us will get hurt, possibly downed. They're humans. They can't see in the dark. We can. I yeah. cannot see in the dark. When... Well, three of us can. But they are dumb. Work. They have lanterns in their towers. Their silhouettes are perfect. With these these magical items you guys gave me, I can simply walk up the walls and what I can take them out from the towers. Uh, above game, when we were looking for the Axis loot. Never, Axis, I know, but Axis <laughs> wasn't there. You guys never looped him in on this one. I, I show him the, the slippers. These magic items allows me to walk up walls. When when I was talking to the leader, did I notice that they were all humans? Yeah, they're all humans. And right. plus one black lab. After we kill these people, we have to make sure the miners can take over this town because there will be a power vacuum. Right, I say we I say we then sleep, stay in the area. And kill them tomorrow night. Were they, were they wearing uniforms when I looked at them, or talked to they them? Were... The leader wasn't. He was wearing more like pajama garb, where some of his men were wearing. Uh, let me just tell you what armor they were wearing. One second here. You notice that the archers were really wearing good studded leather, and you realize that. One of the guards was wearing splints. Okay. Okay. Come if if night. we camp, Nick, we'll, I'll, I want to keep an eye to see if anyone leaves the gate. I will, I will keep an eye here. They, they have not spotted me. I can keep watch here. And you guys, no, go further down, back the way that we came, and make camp there, and we'll meet up tomorrow night. Well, I'm fine I, here on my own. They won't find me. I want to see if they send out any more slavers. Right. That's the reason I'm staying here. Okay. I'm going to start heading back then, and make a campsite. Okay, how far back do you want to make the campsite? I'll say 100 feet, and if there's like any sort of shrubbery or bushes or whatnot. There is no bushes or shrubbery in the headland. It's just rocks, dirt, and hills. Cool. I'm going to start. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go back about 100 feet and then probably just start digging little trenches to make camping. Okay. Um. Have you guys actually fallen asleep? No, you haven't fallen asleep. You just took short rests. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll just say this area here is 100 feet. Like, Cooper, you're staying here. This indicates 50 feet. It's not exact diameter, but we'll just say for the sake of story. Yeah, right. we, got all, we got all the bear traps off your steed and the dead guys. <laughs> uh, Ichabod, you're going with the group or you're staying with Koto? Oh... Go with a group. I'll go back. They know that you're there. Yeah. Because okay. they they will be watching for you. They'll be watching for your group to leave. They don't know I'm here. I'll go back with the group, and I think we should set up a watch. Okay. 
right? Almost watching. What? Go to sleep. I'll wake you up in four hours. <laughs> I flip them off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Kodo, you're just gonna stay put there and just, like, go through the night, right? Okay. You're staying awake for the full eight hours. Um, yep. The rest for the rest of the party. Um, are you guys setting your own watches or no? Yeah, I'll stay up the first four and then wake okay. up one of the others. Okay. So you stay up for the first four hours, Ekabod, of this long rest. Um, other than like feeling of snakes being nearby there's really not any danger 100 feet away from the camp um you koto you are just watching from 50 feet away hidden and you could tell make an insight check on these air on these like archers flat or advantage um i would say go ahead and make it with advantage because you would you know a lot about archers so you I got a, thir the a 13. All right. With a 13, you insight checking these archers. You know that these archers are on top of their game. They're not messing around. They're checking. They're looking left and right. So you know, like, okay, these are competent. Whether they're as good as you, you're not too sure. But they are getting the basics and even some of the advanced scouting stuff done as far as keeping watch. So these guys are on top of their area game. Um, with the rest of the four hours, Ichabod, what would you like to, which one of your party members would you like to keep awake? Well, there's only two others that can see in the dark, so I'll wake up Am Amnes? Amran? Amran. Yeah. Amran. Okay. You wake up Amnes. Uh, yeah, yes, Ichabod, what is this? You take a watch. Fine, I can. She takes a watch. She makes a perception check. Okay. Was she sleeping by me at all? <laughs> she was a little bit. She wasn't next to you, next to you, but she was like keeping her distance. Um, I so stealth she... up with the twenty-five to wake her up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Emran keeps watch. Koto. Um, at this point, I would like for you to make a constitution saving throw for you sleep, for you've been staying awake for a full 24 hours. Nope. I'm going to eat my magic chicken. That's going to keep me awake. <laughs> That's fair. You eat your magic chicken. Oh, hmm, this is some really good chicken. As yep, you're now, finishing up... I only have chicken. two of those left now. I've been keeping track. As you chewing up this chicken and feeling a little bit tired, not tired as in, like, you could pass out, but tired as in, like, yeah, you haven't slept in, like, a while. The sun rises. Yeah. All of you take y'all long rest, which is up to half your hit dice, half the spell slots, um, and you regain your class and racial abilities. As Aaron's character, she has, has given me an error for some reason. Um, Through the whole night, have I seen them change guard? I will let you know that in a second. I'm just changing Aaron's character sheet on her spells and her abilities. Okay. okay, so she used this. So she held the spell, which goes off, and then she regains it back. Yeah. All right, so Aaron regains a spell slot. As... You are constantly keeping watch, Kodo. You see that as the sun rises, these archers climb down. Boop. 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 And taking their place is what seems like to be just regular guards with crossbows. As I adjust here. And I need you to make a perception check for me, for you might hear this or might not hear. Advantage or flat? Say again? Advantage or flat? Flat. 
20. You hear the gate being lifted. Oh, forgot to grab this other token here. Place it down. Boop. All right. You hear the galloping of two horses. And you also see calling out are two horses, each with a rider on top of it. And these riders look to be a little bit more armed in comparison to the ones you faced previously. You hear them say, well, you hear a voice coming from the wall um, say, Find what happened to our men. And if you see those bastards we saw last night, make sure you drag them down here. And then they gallop away. Whee! As they gallop away, you hear the stone gate close. So you see this, Coca. As they, okay. they gallop away. It's only two riders. I know they can two take riders. care of two riders. Yep. I mean, we took care of four. So. Okay. And these, right. Now, compared to the bowmen, these guys are more slack with their jobs. They're not in attention to their surroundings. They're more filling a spot on the wall. Is that the it, procession I'm getting? Make an insight check. Make another insight. The advantage? Like last time? Uh, what is your weapon proficiencies? Besides the bow, of course. Long sword. Sword, sword. Nothing with crossbows? No. Alright, just make it regular. Raised by elves, man. Crossbows? No. <laughs> Ew. Regu regular check, then. I mean, even without knowing the crossbow, I know I would be able to tell the people behind yes. the crossbow. Based on your background, you were with elves. Elves tend to be more with the traditional bow and bow tactics. Being crossbow men and wearing different gear might give you different tactic insights for that. So with that being said... Yeah, you're sure. not getting what I'm saying. I rolled a 9. Like, I'm ex-military, dude. I could tell you a good person on the wall or a bad person on the wall. It doesn't matter with, what gear or what weapon nine, they have. With your 9, you could tell that yeah. these crossbow, crossbow men... Like, crossbows is basically a cheating way of a long bow. Um, so obviously with their tactics with shoot there's going to be a delay which could give you entryway that being said you could tell that they're not keeping as eye of detail in comparison to the archer got it the two guys at the gates does it look like they're talking being buddy buddy or are they actually trying to do their job At moments, you hear them talk about, you know, just like, you know, buddy buddy shit. But it's not like they're spending their whole time. Like they talk about one thing and then they go do their jobs. Got so. it. Okay. Anything else you would like to do? Yeah. Let's keep an overwatch. All right. Back at the campsite, you guys wake up and uh Amarin's gone. What? Yeah, Axius, you wake up and you look left and right, you're like, wait, who's keeping watch? Oh wait, where's Amarin? And you're kind of questioning left and right. Like where is she? I look at my elk and I telepathically he's like, Did you see what happened? I like squint my eyes at him, but I know I know not to blame him. Uh, can, I, can I do a survival check to, to look for tracks to see anything? Make a perception check for tracks. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. You see, you know, tracks that lead to camp that leads to in the camp. You're like, okay, that's like our group clearly, and there's no other tracks. As you look at above the tracks above the hilltop, um, you look over it. And you look down and you see that, you know, there's clearly like a slip and fall situation here. And when you look down, 
you, you see that there are other tracks besides um, one pair of footsteps. It's actually like some galloping as well. As far as like horse tracks. So Amherst tracks are going So down. like you see tracks that go like above the hill and there's clearly like disappear as you look down at the hill which is about 10 feet and you see down there along with like tracks that seem to look like they would get uphill but you see horse tracks along the path but you don't know which path exactly as this horse tracks go like through this entire pathway. So you're not too sure, like, where, who came from what direction. I'm gonna go get on my mount. I'm gonna look at Anaya. It's like, let's go. All right. I'm gonna wait for her to climb on back. All right. And I'm gonna go follow those tracks. All right. Blue will kind of just stay back a bit as he is like loses another max hit point and it's just getting sicker and sicker. Um, would you like to do anything with your mount? I'm following the tracks. Okay. But Anaya what are myself, you doing with your mount? My mount is... I'm on my mount with Anaya gotcha. following the tracks. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm Blue's with Ichabod. Yeah, I'm leaving him in the trench. Okay. You take Anaya. There you go. Um, Ichabod, would you like to do anything? You are with Blue. Uh, there's no cave or... Any place I could hide him. Um, you can like so again. There's like built areas, so some that are higher, some of the lower. Blue even says, eh, "Don't worry, go join them. I'll I'll be all right." He's in a trench. Just bury him a little bit. <laughs> I take my blanket out and wrap it around him. Didn't need that. I have this cloak, but thanks. <laughs> Shut right. up, I'm the leader. Do as I say. <laughs> Alright, you go then travel. So you guys stealthing your way up, I presume? I am. Okay. Axius? No, no, I'm, I'm like... I'm following oh, you're just going? Track. Yeah, okay. I'm following these tracks. Like... And Naya being smart, well, wow, she rolled a one. She's, she's not being stealthy. Alright. Koto, you're continuing surveying. And you hear a whistle coming from the distance. And you hear, Hey, look what we found. We found a little tiefling over here. And you see Aaron being tied up to the back of one of these horses returning. I, do I see this guy uh, raising the gate? Um, yeah. So you see this guy saying, Oh shit. And then raising the gate. Yeah, I shoot him. All right, attack roll. As I spawn the rest of these tokens here. And yeah, that's a 30 to hit him. That definitely hits. <laughs> e strike. I'm basically going to stop him from raising the gate. Get these guys back in there. Okay. With, uh, so go ahead and roll board. damage. So 14 points of damage to that guy. All right. You shoot your arrow. Ah, and the gate gets halfway up before it violently shuts down as he like goes over the left. And these guys stop right about here. They'll pull their horses back. And I just moved the map for myself. Sorry, I'm just adjusting the size of the map for myself here. All right, the, this guy then says, ah, shit. Guys, we're being under attack. And then you hear a bunch of whistles go off. And these guys are going to make perception checks to see where that came from. Um, What is your stealth modifier, Kodo? Five. Five. Let me just check my perception. Yeah, they're looking around and they don't spot you. They're saying, like, where the hell did that shot come from? So what do you do, Koto? I'm going to shoot the guy that's next to the, the crank again. 
All right. Another attack. 16 to hit. That... Let me see. Check this out. You said 16? Yep. That misses. So, the guy... The 16 uh, misses, and they were wearing... What kind of armor? Splint. Hey, you're saying leather. I said leather for the archers. I said splint it's for the other man. guys. Yep. Unless so he's probably splint. got half cover being... So, splint is a heavy armor, so the crossbowmen are wearing... He said one guy was wearing splint that was on the ground. I said that Ichabod saw one guy, one of the guys wearing a Got splint, it. and I said the archer was wearing instead of leather. So, all right, I don't like this one at a time thing. So, can we get in, into the the game so I can start? Throwing oh, we more are gonna get into the guys. game. So you shoot the arrow. You're like, ah, it came from that direction. At this point, Axius, you're not being stealthy, and a nail failing for fail check. Boop, pop out with this giant demon thing with Ichabod being hidden. I'm the only one hidden amongst the group. And then, at this point, this guy says, Hey! I think it's those guys! Wait! It's those guys from last night! And then, one of them pulls out the horn, blows the horn, and we roll initiative when we come back from break. So, we'll take about five minutes, and we'll come back with some action. Hell yeah!
And welcome back. It is time for us to roll initiative, friends. Yeah. Yeah. What did y'all roll? Ichabod got a 10. Axios mm -hmm. got a 15. Kojo 16. got a 21. 16. Nice. 16, 10, 21. Okay. I'm going to fuck these guys up. Do the NPCs. So the friendly NPCs rule like dog shit, unfortunately. So Anaya and I gotta say and... Axius' sister slash wife. <laughs> um, I'm just checking the dex modifiers on the enemies here, and I'm just gonna choose. Let's see here. All right. Uh, all right koto you are the first one up the horn has been blown so you assume that enemies are close by but you're still hidden but clearly your friends are not except for ichabod what would you like to do i'm gonna turn the the gatekeeper into a pin cushion ain't getting that all gate right. open all right attack roll Ah, oh, crit fail. Ah, oh, unfortunately, you shoot your arrow, but it goes halfway down the line. Unfortunately, okay. as like the horn is like, oh shit, and then you just a panic bow, but unfortunately, didn't make it. But you still have more attacks, though. I have a way more. Crit, I crit with my second attack. <laughs> How does this dude die? <laughs> Straight through the neck, so he can't blow that horn anymore. All right, as he's about to blow the second horn, it goes. Whoo! Just like a trumpet, a failed trumpet blow would, as he collapses to the ground, dead. All right, then... still have your Kensai shot and your movement at this yeah, point. Hold on, let me let yes. me roll this because the it's making me having to roll the damage. So, oh yeah, I right. did twenty damage to that guy. I think I was oh, fucking. Yeah. Toast. He's definitely fucking dead. It's my key shot, so... and I am targeting. So, at this, this point, right this here. guy does see you. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm taking care of the gatekeepers right now. Okay. They can't come out and attack us. I'm gonna key shot this guy. Alrighty. Alright, 17. 17 just hits his armor class. So roll Wait. damage, and he'll take half of it. Oh, uh, hold on. That's 16, so he took 8 damage. Okay. He takes an arrow in between, like, the armor and, like, the flesh. And he goes, damn it! And he looks at you. Movement-wise, would you like to do anything at this point? You're 50 feet away from the complex. Yeah, I can move 40 feet, so I'm going to move 40 feet towards the wall. All right, go ahead and move your token. And that's going to be your turn. I don't know right. how... I don't know... Because you told us the distance is different. Yeah, so... So going over there is going to cost you 20 because you're coming from 50 feet. And from there, you say you have 40 feet? Mm hmm So you could get... Let me just go to my hand here. So you could get... Oh, come on. There we go. So you could get up to here because, like, you're crossing over terrain and what have you. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So you could get any, basically anywhere amongst, like, this vicinity here if you want to move in a general yeah, direction. Yeah, that's, no, that's fine. Where I'm going okay. is right fine. Gotcha. So the enemies get to go now. So this guy. That is shoot. my movement. All right. So, let's see here. These two crossbowmen see you approach and shoot arrows, and they're also concerned about this giant fucking thing fifty feet away. Um, let me just see here. Oh, that one fell off. Nice tray. So one of them will attack the mount. One of them will attack you, Koto. Um. Let's see this one's gonna attack you with two let me just double check here because these stat blocks are a bit weird two differently. does he have the feet let's see here okay so this the one nearby in front of you koto is gonna attack you twice 
Damn, with a crossbow, he has to have the feet. That's what sucks about crossbows. So he hits you with a 18. Deflect missile. Deflect missile. And I throw it, right. And I throw it right back at him. All right. Um, so the total damage would be eight, but doesn't matter because you rolled what a d10. Yeah, I rolled yeah, a d10 so, plus 10. All right, you take an and 18. You, and you use a reaction to, to deflect it. Yep, and he all takes right. 18. All right, 18. And burn a key point. Ah! Second attack against you if he's pissed off about that. He pulls the arrow right from him and just puts it back on the bolt that fires. However, because like he's losing blood, he misses, unfortunately. And it unfortunately just goes like five feet in front of you. The other crossbowman is going to attack the mount within 18. Uh-huh. Seven damage, piercing. Uh-huh. Second attack against the mount that's cocked. A nine doesn't hit it, I presume. Nope. Okay, so that is a miss. You hear movement going about in the camp, and you hear people gearing up for a fight. Um, this guy over here is going to climb down. Oh, I'm not going to make him bigger. Not making him bigger, no. Okay. So this guy's going to get up, and he'll vanish because you guys can't see him. And then they'll move. You just hear a bunch of clamor going on, but weirdly enough, you guys hear like mining going down in the tunnel, and it's being very, very loud. Um, a sound of an explosive can be heard from inside the mine, and some shouting in there too. Um, that being said, um, you guys gonna go here? Sorry, I'm just moving tokens that you guys can't see right now. That's all good. So, let's see shit here. that's happening behind the DM screen. And it makes sense because you guys don't know what lies beyond here. All right, that's going to be it for the enemies. Axius, you're up. These crossbowmen are attacking your mount. What would you like to do? Uh, who am I closest to? You of... are. You are closest to your allies. You see Ichabod. He's hidden pretty well. You see Anea nearby you. He is. She is not hidden so well. And you see Kodos charging up the gate. What about enemies? Like, who am I? How many feet am I away from the nearest? Um, so you're about the 50 feet mark, so let, they're about 50 feet. Let me feet interject here because this might be important. You see two riders and your wife on the back of one of those horses. Oh, I completely forgot about them. So, thank you for. I don't know me. if that's going to change your mindset on attacking guys on the wall, but your wife is on the back of a horse in front of the gate. These two guys down here are just going to take take the dodge action. They don't know what the hell's going on. How far are they away from me? They are. If. Oh, come on. No Windows update. Do not update my computer. Not now. All right. I know you want to give me Windows 11, but I can't. One second here, folks. Technical difficulties. Go away. Okay. So, again, crossing the threshold would be 30, would be 20. And then they are about 30 feet away from you. So that's 50 feet away with your total movement. 50 feet? Yeah, so your because horse, you got to cross 20. Moves 50, right? Yeah, yeah so you got to get across 20 here, and then it takes a full 30 just to get to your wife. Fuck yeah, dude. Charge and splatter them all. <laughs> all right, so yeah, I'm charging with my elk towards them. Um, does okay. my elk need to roll initiative? Because I want to attack with it as well. Or... We'll say your elk takes on the same turn as you are. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to have the... That's actually written into the rules. So, perfect. Yeah. I'll if it attack. wasn't, I would allow it. So, right. yeah. So, while I'm charging towards them, I'm going to use my bonus action to go into a rage. Sure. Uh, cool. You scream out, that's my wife. <laughs> All, all in Inferno. I'm just trying to scare sure. the crap out of them. Uh, sure, and that's then... my piece of ass, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to do the charge attack with my elk against the horse that Anaya, I mean Amrit is um, tied to. Okay, so go ahead and make your attack with disadvantage because they're actively dodging. No, the horse is not dodging. The riders ah. are dodging. The I horse see. isn't. So go ahead. Make the attack against the horse. 
PETA is going to come find me. Uh, that is fifth. That is thirteen to hit. Thirteen. Let me just double check a horse stat block, y'all. This is like horse stat blocks. Yeah, that hits. It's a horse, so. Okay, so the Alp does. It has to make one... a strength save, I think, right? Yeah, it has to make a strength save of DC thirteen or be knock prone and natural I, twenty still... on the dice. It still takes one d six plus three of damage. Which is nine damage. The horse gets gored, but not enough to knock it down, nor the rider. Alright, well, since... How many attacks do I get? Is it just one? I'm just going to see You get one. one attack with your mount, and then you yourself have two attacks. Perfect, and I'm raging, and I'm looking at this dude. Yep. So... so it's mounted combat, y'all. I'm going to swing at his horse. <laughs> swing at his horse? All right. Yeah. Oh, man. Dang, that's a 24 to hit. That hits. For 14 damage? Yeah. You kill the horse. The rider does succeed on his deck save, so he hops off. I'm going to use my second attack on him. All right. Attack roll with this with just regular attack roll, because you would get a va Well, are you recklessing on this or no? Wait, I'm mounted. Why would I need to reckless? Oh yeah, that's right. But all right, but he is actively dodging still, so make regular. Oh, yeah, that's true. He is actively dodging. Okay, yeah, that's straight roll. That's fine. Mounted I'm combat, not... folks, doesn't happen that often in D and D games. I'm not. Uh, I'm not recklessly attacking. No. Okay. Just want to make sure. Oh dang! Thirteen to hit. Oh, shit. Doesn't hit. He blocks your attack. All right. Um. That's all my actions. I can't move off my Alk and do anything, so yeah. Alrighty. Ichabod, you are currently hidden. What would you like to do? Is Anea be beside me? Yes, but she is not as hidden as you. I will grab her by the hand and tell her to come with me and move up the 30 feet that we right. have. Okay, so 20 feet will get you to the threshold here. Uh, I was going to be heading down towards with the... Um, oh, you want to go down? Okay. Yeah, the combat. So where we're standing at. All right. So you would go here. Get. And so that takes up 20 feet of movement. And with your 10 feet of movement, you could get up to... You could get up to halfway there. You're not going to make it this round. I'll get up as close as I can, tell Alea, or Anea to shoot the guy in the tower. Okay. Her bow. And I will try to. Do I have a clear shot on the other guy on the horse with my blow gun? Even uh, though it's my what's the range of it? 25 feet. And then after that, it's up to. Let me look again. Okay, so. 25 off... feet to 100 feet. Okay, so which guy? This guy here that just got off his horse or the guy still mounted on his? No, the guy still mounted. Okay, so go ahead and make your attack roll with disadvantage. Alright. Seventeen and a twelve. Twelve with the gun would be an eighteen to hit. That hits. So he has to make a con save. E four damage and then the con save. Okay. Con save. He fails it. So he falls off his horse. How much wind does this blow dart have to pierce through from that distance to hit him? He, sh he shoots the blow dart. Get him dart, in the armpit. And he's actively dodging, but it just slips past the blade that he is, like, blocking with. And it just goes right in, the, in between crevices of his splint and that which he falls off his mouth. Oh, I made him. It's ring mail. I get it right through the ring mail. <laughs> it's like when you really like try to visualize it. He has a blow gun. <laughs> yep. So this guy is unconscious. All right. <laughs> so that's your first attack. Uh. Oh, what the hell? I'll try to blow gun the guy that. The other guy standing up. Okay, so go ahead and make your attack with disadvantage. Fifteen. 
15 and 11. 11 plus 6 is 15 to hit. Doesn't hit. He dodges out of the way of it. Okay, and that's that's my turn. Alrighty. A successful turn, I would say. Oh, by the way, this horse runs away. <laughs> Seeing Damn that it, lunch. Come back, Seeing lunch. that giant elk demonic thing, it's getting the fuck out of there. Um, to Neo's go. Um, clarification. Which guard watchtower do you say she wants um, to attack? This one or this one? I'll use my this guy right up here where my character's now circling. Uh, I'm not seeing your marker good, sir. At least on my screen. You see it okay. now? Where yep. I'm standing okay. at? Yep. Cool. All right. I can't. I haven't mastered the pin thing yet. I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. Um, okay, so that's within her range with her short bow. She only gets one attack. Yeah, that's not going to hit. So she shoots, but unfortunately the arrow goes down before she before it even hits the watchtower. She's noticing now that distance actually matters, Koto. Um, that's all that Nea can really do on her turn. Emrin's still unconscious, so she can't really do much. Um, so, Koto, it is your turn. How far away am I from the wall? You are... Hold on, please. Oh, nope, that's the wrong thing. You are 15 feet away from there. All right, then I'll be on top of the wall. So that's right, 15 on... plus 25, so I'm on top yep. of the wall. Boop! Here's what you and see. I... <laughs> Um, what would you like to do while I unreveal tokens here? Shooting this guy in the tower. Okay, make your attack roll. Sixteen. Sixteen. Or just make well, it so he takes half. You said sixteen or seventeen? Sixteen. Sixteen. Sorry. I'm just checking my stat block here. No. Misses. Okay. You do have more attacks, though. I do. That one misses. Key strike. All right. 20. 20 will hit. Damage. Plus four. Uh, 17 points of damage. Nice. You shoot this guy. And she goes, ah! Ugh. And you can tell that he's on his last leg since he's got another arrow. Well, he's got eight arrows sticking in him. Um, you see this. You see that the archers are kind of spread apart. As you can see, like they are just like heading towards the watchtowers. Well, they were heading towards the watchtowers. You see their leader with his black lab right here. You do see these guys coming out of their homes and what have you as they are gearing up for fight. You're the only one that sees this, by the way. Um, yeah. And I'm the only one they see. Yep. Um, and with that, it is their turn. So okay. The archers, go. archers go. So, the archer has two attacks with a longbow. Just so I don't roll multiple dice multiple times, I'm just going to roll the dice twice, and that will represent their attacks. Just so I don't have to roll it multiple times. The first back will miss. The second will not. So, their first couple of rounds miss as you try to dodge and avoid. You're like, oh shit, these guys are tacked on point. And then they quickly readjust their aim and they shoot their second volley at you. So... Okay. What would is... you like to deflect any of theirs? Yeah, the AC is 18. AC is 18, so they roll 17 plus... Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, seventeen plus six. So yeah, I'm gonna deflect one back at him. Okay. So out of the three, you could deflect one. It would be eight piercing. So you could deflect sixteen one of them back and... to him. All right. Which one would you like to shoot back at? Uh, this guy. All right. Shot me right. You. Yep. Uh, no, the archers did. Oh well, then yeah. Okay. Deflect it right shot. back at him. You shoot it right back at him. Okay. So that's a good thing. So then, they are going out of the... And two... how much damage did he do to me? 
Um, so I'm going to get to that in a second. So they okay. each have an ability called Archer's Eye. So when they hit, they can add an additional D10 for it. So let me just roll the D10. Oh, it just adds an additional two. So that brings the total of a grand total of 17 damage from two longbow arrows. All right, that's the archers go. The crossbowmen will try to take his revenge on you. Now, this is a big moment. This is the first time I've took damage in the campaign. The crossbowmen, very damaged, will miss with this first attack. Wow, exact same result. We'll miss with both of his attacks as he is close to death's door. And you see, Koto, that the leader of the group says, We're being invaded! Then prepare for battle! And he will grant a buff to... And I'll just tag the guys who are getting buffed uh, with color rings around them. So this guy's getting buffed. This guy's getting buffed. As he does a rallying cry. So they'll get bonuses to their attacks. The guys with and the blue circles? Yes, these are the guys that will get buffs just to indicate above board. Um, and then let me just check the range on this. No, this guy doesn't get it. So those just those guys will get buffs. Uh, and that, he'll spend his action doing that with dog barking up and about. These guys... Are gonna well this guy anyway is gonna go further back so he can get more of a better view. This guy with the buff. Gonna march closer to there. He'll only get there for the turn. Uh leader's gonna stay there. This guy can only get up to the tower with all of his movement plus his action. And this guy is gonna go to the front gate with his action. And then this archer is gonna try to get a clearer view here. And as you see these guys moving around, taking positions and what have you, you hear another what sounds like to be an explosion coming from the mines, along with more yelling. But this yelling is not like yelling at each other, but it's more rather like yelling in a weird, fearful way. That being said, Axius, it is your turn. You see one guy's unconscious and one guy is not. Oh, wait. Forgot about these guys. Keep forgetting about them. This guy's unconscious. This guy's gonna attack your mouth twice. Sixteen to hit. Uh -oh. Um, should I stat blocks. Your mount takes seven slashing damage. All right. Second attack. Fourteen to hit. That hits. Take another seven slashing damage. She's down. You see this mount go down in two slashes. Make a dexterity saving throw. Me? Yes, as you are falling off your mount as it dissipates. Oh yeah, I'm on a mount. You're right. Is that with advantage or no? I would say I'll give you advantage because rage allows you advantage for dex. Well, you have a ability that lets you, like danger sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. As I spill my water, I'll grant you advantage. Uh, that's a thirteen. Yeah, you make it. Not a hard DC, so you land on top of it, and the, you guys are just staring down at each other at this point. Oh no! Once All it's right. down, once it's down, it like teleports right back to hell to recover. Oh yeah. So as it collapses, hands come from hell and drag it down with them. I still have a and shitty you, grin because I'm raging, yeah. All right. And, and as you lock eyes with the guy who took down your mount, Axius, what would you like to do? I'm going to use my bonus action to channel divinity. Uh, what is it? What is it? Abjure enemy? Oops. One second. Okay. It's a... Uh... Vow of en Enmity. So I choose one creature I can see within 10 feet, and I get advantage on all attacks against it for one minute until it's incapacitated. Okay. So I'll just mark him with red to signify that. And I'm going to attack him twice. Make your attacks. Would you like to recklessly attack? No, I already have advantage with the channel divinity. Oh yeah, with the enmity. My apologies. Try I to still... remember. 
I just like giving options out. <laughs> so that's just a 12 to hit the first one. First one. Miss. I'm going to go again. That's a 23 to hit. That will hit. I'm going to pump a second level Divine Smite into this one. Ooh, okay. You fucking killed my damn mouth. How dare you? <laughs> fucking oh, I guess it's never coming back. <laughs> I mean, I can summon it again. Uh, so that's <laughs> 17 damage plus 3d8. That's a, that's a spell slot. You're making me waste, you fool. Plus another 16. So 17 plus 16, that is 33 damage. Jesus Christ. All right. You slash at him, and with your divine spite, he is bloodied. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to have a shitty and grim looking at him. Ichabod, you're up. What would you like to do? Um, run up to her. Is she bound? Yes, she is tied up. Take my dagger out and cut her hands and feet loose. Okay, we'll and, say that'll take up your action because you're. And then an my bonus action, I'll like shake her awake. Wake right, up. you wake her up. And she's like, ah, what? Ah, my head. What is going on? Time to burn some slavers. Alrighty. That's your turn, Ichabod. So Anea's go. And Amarin's. Uh, let's see here. Anea would shoot at the guy Koto's been attacking. Their arrow. With a dirty 20, she kills the archer. Goes, ah! And he collapses and he falls to the ground. And you turn around, Cody, and you see Anea, like, like, yes, I got it. I do that behind the look, like, give him or nod, like, behind me and give the thumbs up. Like, good job, nice. kid. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, That's your girlfriend. Then... Oops. <laughs> she, with her movement, she can only get up to here. Um, Amron will stand up a, t- a 15 feet up. Will go up to the dude that her husband has been attacking and will pull out her dagger and her short sword and we'll do some two weapon fighting here but we all right first attack with the short sword this is bonus action dagger attack now adding proficiency bonus uh sorry folks here just looking at character sheets which will hit with a dirty 20 She'll add her sneak attack damage to it as well. Which is, I believe, at her level 2 or 3 d6. Let me just double What's check. your level? Her level is 6. That's 3 three d6. Thank you, kind sir. It should go up every... Go up 1d6 every two levels. Nice. Good to know. She does a grand total of... Seven. Ten points of stabbing damage. This guy gets stabbed right in the gut, and you see your wife just turning in, twisting the knife, and they just just cutting his guts go going, ah! Oh, oh, and you see he's barely like putting his insides together. So that's gonna be it for Amrin's turn. Kodo, you're up. You see this. You see the leader buffing his allies in a war cry. You hear weird stuff coming from the mine. What would you like to do? I'm shooting this guy. Attack roll. Nineteen. Hits. Damage. Ten. Alright. You shoot him. He takes an arrow to the chest. Thirteen will miss. Thirteen will miss. He'll dodge the second arrow. You strike. Key strike. Key strike will miss. All right. I'm, he I'm going to move the... into this tower. Okay. You this so. tower give me any bit of cover? Or um, I get a one or two to my AC? It will give you a... Hold up. Because two-thirds oh, cover oh. will give me plus two to AC. It will give you half cover. So you'll, you'll get a plus two to your AC. Which is nice. what now? 20. 20? Okay. Good to know. Alrighty. Is that going to be your turn? Yep, that's it. That, I'm done. That archer 
is pissed at you. He's going to pull the arrow out of him and will shoot it back at you. First attack. Will miss. Second attack. Will also miss. This guy who is buffed with the arrow, with the archer, excuse me, that is buffed, will miss the first attack against you. And will miss the second attack against you, surprisingly, even with his buffs. Uh, the third archer will shoot again. The archer will hit you with his second attack, the last one. And yeah, he he's will... too far away for me to throw it out. I can deflect it, though. You can deflect uh... it. So I'll burn another key point and deflect that arrow. Okay. Can you throw it at someone else, or does that have to be him? It has to be the person. Okay. It's like really specific with deflecting the missile, like right back at the person. That's fair. Yeah, I wish I could. <laughs> I I see what you're talking about, bud, and I wish I could, but this guy he's will, really specific with his rules. This guy will not spend one of his archer eye points for he saw you deflect his missile. So go ahead, you deflect it. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, this guy will spend his turn climbing up, and you see this guy climbing up your ladder. Uh, and will actively take the dodge action as he is trying to be careful as you are in the, the tower. This guy, this archer will go a bit more back towards the entrance to the mine. This archer will go changing his position over here. This archer will get back a bit. He, this guy will open up the gates. Axius and Ichabod, you see the gate being rolled up. And as such, you see this guy come out over here. And he'll spend an action to wake his buddy up. His buddy gets up. And he will... Well, let me just check. Here. Let me check his movement speed. One moment, please. This is about being the DM trying to switch over tabs. A moves of feet is 50 is 30 so he will just get in front of Ichabod and will attack you twice Ichabod with his long sword the right. first one the first one will hit with a natural 19 on the die you take okay. you take seven points of slashing damage second attack does a 14 hit you or no nope armor class 16 Nice. So you take the first hit and then you dodge for the second hit. Um, okay. The guy in the tower over here will let's see here. He sees one, two, three, four. So let me roll a d4 to see who he targets. He will target Axius. Just attack with the crossbow bolt. Um... Axius, what is your AC? Eighteen. Yeah, the first one will miss. Second one's a natural one. So both of those shots will miss. That being said, the leader seeing Ichabod with his black glove, it says, Oh, so you think you could try to intrude on my mind, huh? Hmm. Seems like your arrows are good, but not as good as my men. And then he will whistle for a command, and that which will find out what happens on the next turn. Um, that being said, Koto, you hear? It... Go ahead. I was going to say, is this guy on the ladder still trying to get up, or is he up in the tower with me? He's climbing up the ladder at this point. Like, he's, so he's climbing okay. up towards you. But as you see this guy climbing towards you and, and like actively protecting himself, you hear something strange coming from the mine. You hear not an explosion, but a loud rumble coming from the mine. And you hear a bunch of screams coming from it. Axius, you are up. The Bullrog runs out of that damn tunnel. I'm running. 
Axis, you are up. Well, you see a dude in front of you who is cursed, and you see your wife stab him to near death. What would you like to do? I am just gonna... I'm gonna attack. I still got advantage against him for a whole minute. Yep. Until he's dead. <clears throat> As I do this, I am gonna shout, You're not taking my wife! <laughs> that is a 23 to hit. Yeah, how do you like to kill him? Uh... Less bloody. I'm just gonna behead him. Just straight clean sh- behead. Clean swipe, and there's like a gardening hose worth of blood coming out from where his head used to be. And uh. this guy dies. And as he dies, your channel divinity, you see him just collapse, and then you body just instantly f- just burns immediately for no apparent reason. And you just see his corpse just being burnt. Uh. I just wanted to get my wife back. I got my wife back. Oh. <laughs> you still have another attack, and there's two dudes there. I know, but I have no. I like. I don't even want to invade this whole thing. Oh, uh, uh, can I? I can't inside check. Someone's attacking Ikebot. I'm going after the one that's attacking Ikebot. I'm doing this recklessly. Sure. We. You say you're recklessly? Yes, this one is reckless. Gotcha. Advantage. Uh, that's twenty-one to hit. That hits. Well, that's save gonna, it. I'm gonna pop another. Uh, I'm gonna pop a first level divine smite on him. Okay. I was about to say another second, but you never know. Misty step. Uh, that is seventeen plus two d eight. Seventeen. Uh, seventeen plus eight, which is twenty five damage. Damn. So you caught him. Goes ah. Ugh. Ugh. Alright. Anything that's, else good, sir? That's my turn. Echobot, you're up. Your buddy Axis landed a good blow on him. What would you like to do? I am going to pull out that Scourge. Alright. The Drow Priestess. If you fail on a con EC of 16, you're knocked out. Alright. And I'm going to swing at that guy. Alright. Attack roll. 13 plus 6 is a 19. That hits him. Seems like a con save. Roll damage while you do that. Six plus three is nine. Twenty on the dice. Excuse oh, so me. Eighteen plus up? two. My apologies. Yep, he's still up. He's not unconscious. He doesn't seem to be phased. You see that whatever poison was on this scourge, like, is on him. But he's like, ah. But he's just managed to fight back against him. But he looks like he's on his last legs, though. Then I will swing at him again with the Scourge. Alright. Attack roll. 13 plus 6 is a 19 again. That hits. Roll damage. 7 and 3 is 10. This doesn't have to do another con save. He doesn't. How does he die? Oh, how he died. Well, I I come down with the Scourge. He doesn't fall down, so I come back up with it the same way. Cross the jaw. Right? As you come up back the same way, his jaw goes fucking flying. Goes, ah! And he, like, he's like, falls down, he collapses, and then like he's horrified that his bottom jaw is missing before eventually dying. I take him away. Oh, Ooh. and I can't do I can't do a bonus attack with my blowgun, can I? Uh, flail is what weapon property? It's a uh, carryall. Um, is it light? Is it light? Is it versatile? I'm looking. It would have to be light. Yeah, I, uh, I allow versatile uh, weapons to be counted too. Cost, no. oh, okay. Weapon common. It's like... It should be under like property. Attack type melee. Notes failed. Yeah, nothing else. It's just a martial melee weapon, so it's not. Yeah. So I can't attack with the blowgun. No. 
No, right. because I'm assuming I'm assuming you will, unless like it says it clearly, like you're holding the weapon that requires all your might for it. So you would have to put it. Away yeah, but you let me uh, fight with the long sword and a dagger. That has yeah, versatility. They... Yeah. Long sword has versatility. Yeah. Yes. Because you can, you can hold one hand sword or two in one. Hand. Yes. Ah. Okay. Yep. But you could second wind if you're losing hit points or anything like that. I've, I'm only down seven hit points. Or action okay. surge. <laughs> you can action surge too. You can action surge and take two more attacks. Or you can hold off that action surge when the boss man comes out. Yeah, I want to wait for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. There us go. She will... At this point, this dude would lock it at this point, so there's no point of going after the guy holding the crank. Uh, and Aya's just gonna shoot an arrow at the guy directly in front of you guys. Yeah, that guy's climbing a ladder. She will miss, unfortunately, as the split armor deflects. Um, actually, so you see your girl Amran go into a tiefling rage and will march forward and attack attack with short sword will one moment please it will hit the dude takes five points of damage second attack with the dagger critical hit she will do a grand total of Nine points of damage. You see your wife slash and then stab and put the stab again, similarly to the first guy. She just is digging into the stomach of what have you and just delivering vicious attacks at a feral like manner. Koto, you are up. What would you like to do? You see a guy climbing up the ladder. You can see yeah, I already know that. I'm going to shoot this guy three times. Okay, make your attacks. Hey, take out these at least before my party members get inside. Okay, with your roll. Not with that attack. What's your roll? Another one. I rolled a 13. Okay. This one I hit. That's a 28. Yep, that will hit. Eight points of damage. Okay. A strike. Hmm. I definitely hit 29. Yep. Very high. Uh, 10 plus a d4. 13 points of damage to that guy. Nice. So he goes, ah, ah, ah. You can tell, see he's on his last legs. Nice. All right. And that is my round. All right. He, the commander, or the leader, excuse me, uh, you guys get to figure out what he was signaling. He was signaling for volley. So with his archers, the archers will take aim and will shoot multiple rounds in the sky in the general direction. And we'll get... Let me just see the radius here. One moment, please. Oh, that's not where I want to put it that erase it no erase it there we go uh, there we go fucking sorry folks my drawing tool doesn't want to work cooperate there we go circle okay so yep so i would need axius and ichabod to make Dexterity saving throws. As you see multiple arrows hurling from the sky. Sixteen. Okay. With the thirteen plus three. Okay. Axius. I also rolled a sixteen. <laughs> nice. You two succeed. You avoid it completely. 
Emrin rolled a natural one, unfortunately. Oh, oh God, no. Uh, does she get hit by all the arrows then, or do they... Do she I... takes... She gets hit in the volley. I have to roll 3d10. Oh, so then... the, if we all three got hit, we'd be getting the 3d10 all together. Um, one moment, please. Yeah, well, you see the arrows coming, so you guys clearly get out of that area. So just move your tokens five feet back from the radius. Amron will take a grand total of... And these guys would use Archer's Eyes, so that's an additional 3d10. They would take a grand total of 22 points of piercing damage. What about the soldier that's literally right in front of her? Oh, I completely forgot. He fails too, so he'll just die. <laughs> <It's probably laughs> nice. Uh, Amran's at four hit points, though. She's not looking too hot. Um, the commander um, <laughs> seen, spent an action last turn doing that. Um, his men will die, unfortunately, even with his buffs. He will then command his dog to go after Amron. The dog will make an attack against Amron. Let me just check the stats of a dog. <laughs> the dog rolled a whopping 22 to hit. It will hit Amron for exactly four points of piercing damage. As she falls unconscious. And will the commander will then says, "Now drag her, boy," and the dog will spend its spoof at dragging. The dog has a speed of forty feet, so it's just barely crossing the threshold. At this point, she's like, "Well, her body's like right. We'll get to right here." As the dog's dragging her. Well, no, she goes to here. Sorry, I'm just tracking movement here. Uh, quick question: How movement. far are they from me now? They are No no before before you drag one. Before you drag Be them. Before? So Aaron was sorry, I was just looking at the stack. So Aaron was here. When... Dogs dogs went here, attacked, and then dragged her. Her being a tiefling, would she have hellish rebuke on that? She would, but her hit points dropped exactly to zero, so she would have no way of reacting at all. Otherwise, uh, she would have definitely. Only, I thought it was an automatic, off. you know. You punch yeah, when you yeah, start. when you drop to zero hit points, you just fall unconscious, and unfortunately, you can't <laughs> react when you're unconscious. And the dog will just right. drag her towards the gates, and the commander will move right over here. Uh, these guys will shoot crossbolt bolts against. Well, let's see here. This guy will continue to shoot Axius. The other guy. Very well to see whether he'll attack Inea or Ichabod. They'll attack Ichabod. So it's two attacks. I'm just going to roll 1d20 to represent both of their attacks. Does a dirty 20, I'm assuming, hits both. Oh, wait. Nope. My apologies. Looking at the wrong stats. Does an 18 hit either of you? That yeah. is my armor class. Okay. It's, so, it's two above mine. So. All right. So Ichabod, you take six points of piercing damage um that just hits your armor class axius but then you're raging so you only take one so you take the hit and you're like ah oh, that's inconvenient you look at ichabod and like he has a crossbow bolt on him second attack it gets you both both miss unfortunately so you guys actively dodge out of this second bout from these crossbow um let's just take a look at the battlefield the guy that was climbing towards your direction is going to share a space with you, and I would like you to make a strength contest as he is going to grapple you. So what are you rolling a strength check, Koto? He's trying to grapple me? Yeah, he's trying to grapple you, so make a strength check against his strength check. Eleven. Yep, you su you succeed. You push him off you, but he's gonna spend his second attack grappling you again. So go ahead and make another grapple contest. 
17. 21. So you are grappled, and he is going to next turn attempt to push you off the, the watchtower. But that's on his next turn. Uh, let's see. Because of volley, these archers can't really do anything as they would spend their attacks. Koto, you see, you hear more of a ruckus coming from the mine. And you see, weirdly enough, a but you hear a bunch of screaming first off, and it's more of like a heavy scream along with like a weird scratching scream. As you see, two dwarves that are chained up, that are dragging a goblin because they're chained up, running away from something. As like these three are chain linked together, are just actively trying to run away. From whatever's from the mining. At this point, I need you to make a perception check. Twelve. I'm a little preoccupied. Twelve. Yeah, you're too preoccupied with him trying to toss you over, unfortunately. But you hear a loud ruckus coming from there, and then you see these three just chained up together, uh, running away. Axius. You're up. The dog's dragging your wife. What would you like to do? Who's the closest enemy to me? The dog. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Man, Peter's gonna... I'm gonna... Like Peter watches us. Gone. <laughs> one second. Give me one... Th oh, dang it. One second. I'm just taking a look at what I can do. Multiple. <clears throat> I am first of all I'm gonna run up to the dog then. <laughs> okay. Kill the dog. <laughs> Kill this black lab dragging your wife. Yeah, I'm gonna go Yeah, I'm gonna go attack it. Do I get advantage because he's currently occupied with um, let me just look at the grapple condition. One moment, please. Boop. And these guys do have grappler feet, as all creatures in my world have grappler feet. Because zero, condition failed. No, you don't get any type of advantage, unfortunately. Alright, so I will be reckless. Okay. That is a 22 to hit? Yes. How would you like to kill this damn dog? <laughs> it's a dog. It doesn't have much hit points. I... I'm beheading it. <laughs> oh my god. You behead the dog. It's like... Ur, ur, ur. You just chop the dog's head right in front of the dude. This dog is fucking dead. And this dude is fucking pissed at you. He's for killing his damn dog. I understand. However, I am flinging my dagger at him. Sure. Attack roll. Uh, I mean, I'm, it's reckless anyway, so fuck it. <clears throat> yep. Why not? That is a 24 to hit. That hits. Well, you're That damage. is a second level Divine Smite. Sure. Because it's the leader, right? Yep, this is the yep. leader, clearly. Yep. Second level divine smite. So that is that is five plus three d eight. Jesus Christ. Five plus eleven. That's sixteen damage. Nice. You throw your dagger. He goes. Ah. Hmm. Nice toss. Then technically he is grappled because it is it gets at the end of my rope. Okay. So, with that being said, uh, anything else you would like to do, by the way, or no? Uh, bonus action can't heal yet. Uh, I can't move with Amber backwards. Can I? No, that's too much. You can drag her, but it will cost you half your movement to drag her. Yeah, I'm dragging her back up. Okay. Whatever it takes. Okay. So, what's your movement? Uh, 30 feet. Okay, so you were... Here, this, this, 
So you could get up to like right here, back to where you were basically. That's fine. Uh, Ichabod, you're up. You see the leader with the rope dagger hanging off of him. What would you like to do? Crap. Blowgun the motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Is he within 25 feet? Uh, that's a great question. No, he's just outside of your range. Unless you move up a bit. No. I'll move up five feet. Would that put me in? Yes, that will give you clear range. Okay. Nineteen. Plus. So did you just crit? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Plus Roll six. Damage. Twenty-five. Well, it's the blowgun. All right. It's an automatic four with eight points of damage plus whatever the con save. Sixteen. All right. Before he makes the con save, he will use his reaction. He'll say, "Then close the gates." He will give this guy a reaction to basically tell him to close the gate, and he will close the gate before he falls unconscious. And you see him going down like. Ugh. Uh, before the gate is shut. The gate is shut behind you. With behind my you. movement... Okay, is this a regular, like, gatehouse? This is like a stone gate that only goes up and down. And no side door or nope. gate door? Nope. Just the wow. single door. That was my last poison dart, too. <laughs> or sleeping dart. Is there any way I can sprint, slide under it before he goes down? I say, if you give up your action surge, you would be able to get under it with your dash action. Uh, I do that. I give All up right. The door is sealed behind you as you see this dude unconscious. Okay. But uh, the, the thing gives me a bonus attack. <laughs> well, you do have. Hmm. Well, you use action attack surge. Against... You get you get your attacks plus bonus. You get your extra. You get your extra action. So you would have to spend basically a dash action to get under there right before the gate closed. So... Uh, okay. So that spends your action. But you did something cool, though. And you have the enemy uh, right, right in front of you, unconscious, ready for the kill. And there yep. you go. She will attempt to save you, Koto. She will attempt to make an attack as you are grappled. She will miss, unfortunately. It hits the wall. <clears throat> well, I... I didn't plan on him trying to grapple me. I thought he was going to try to punch me. That's or true. attack me with a sword. That was That's my true. bad. Because <laughs> I get all kinds of bonuses, and well, I'm a fucking monk, so I can hit him five times. But no, true. you know, it's a try to grapple me like a pussy. <laughs> all right, so that's a roll death save for Amarin. Okay, let's mark that down on her sheet. Okay, did music stop? Yeah, all right, yeah. let me play it back. Right, Black. We went through that whole playlist. Damn, that's pretty cool. Okay. There we go. Action's back. Alright. So. Koto, you're up. You're grappled. You can punch him. I gotta break the grapple. Yep. Can I punch him? If you let me punch him, I'm gonna punch uh, him. Let me just double check. Let me just check <laughs> grapple real quick. I gotta check grapple and grapple feet, because everyone has the grappler feet. I think... If you're in the grapple with the grappler feet, you get advantage on attacks. Speed becomes zero, can't benefit bonus of speeds. Condition ends if the grappler's incapacitated. Condition also ends if the effect of the grapple. Okay. Let me check the grappler feet, because everyone has it. I guess the creature you are grappling. Okay. You use your action to pin a grappler. Okay. 
Okay, so you can make regular attack. So you can make melee attacks against him, but it doesn't say specifically with advantage or not. So these would be with regular attack rules. Oh, okay. All right. Monk shit, here we go. First Monk time shit, here we go. Stuff. 18. 18 hits. Takes eight. All right. Ah! He takes a punch. He looks sweet. 25. That hits. Damage. Eight. All right. Describe to me. Blows. Oh, I don't right. need to do flurry of blows. Before you do flurry, well, before you do spend your flurry of blows with your monk prowess, how would you like to defeat this guy? Well, as soon as he grapples me, I'm gonna go in and kick out his knee, and for my second attack, I'm gonna be headbutting him. So I basically shove his nose back into his skull. All right, you headbutt him, and as you do, he's like KO'd as it before falling off and dying. And cool. you still have your bonus action. Yep. I'm going to key strike this guy, because fuck him. <laughs> okay. And a special thing that's kicked off, too. After the Kensei, Agile Perry, if you make an unarmed strike or your attack action on your turn and are holding a Kensei weapon, which I am, you get a plus two bonus to your AC until the start of your next turn. So my AC so is now a 22, a 22 up in the tower. Yep. Nice. Yep. See, that's what I was trying to do, but then the guy wanted to play grab ass, so I missed all my <laughs> shots. Oh, can see shots. Get him. Guy. Ah! 13. Nope, he dodges it. <sighs> all that. Hey, man. Made me waste another arrow. God. All right. So. The enemies go. Okay. It's the enemies go. So is there like a, a rancor chasing these little guys? What the hell? Oh, is I'm gonna up? get to that in a second here. So, and is it only me that sees all this shit? So these you're the only one that is seeing any oh of this shit. <laughs> they have and, no idea what's happening. And Ichabod this might see it, but there's a bunch of well, there's the leader there, but he might see it, but he's in the entrance. Well, so, no, I, mean, oh my I got this one bit. I got like three or four buildings in front of me. That's true. So, let me just think here, what they would do. All right, this guy's gonna spend his whole movement climbing up this. This guy can spend his movement climbing up this, and this guy can only get up to here, trying to get a better angle. So, all first round of attacks. Uh, Magic number is twenty-two. Yeah, that doesn't hit. Second. Um, uh, second round of volleys. They shoot at me. <laughs> 24. Second round of volleys. And they will use... Uh, Would you like to use your reaction? Yep, yeah, I'm going to lose... I'm going to use my last key point to deflect one of those missiles. All right. So you'll get... So out of those archers, two of them will use archer's eye. Two of them don't have archer's eye anymore, so they can't add additional damage to it. Um... Sorry, doing math. That is a total of. It's like 86. Did you just say 86? I said 8 plus 8 is 16. So that's oh, I thought you there. said 86. I'm like, plus I'm marchers. dead, <laughs> dead if it's 86. <laughs> that's a total of 23 points of piercing damage with both of them Jeez. using archer's eyes. I thought you said only one can have Archer's Eye because the other two, they all use Archer's Eye on the volley. Yeah, they use, so one of them, they use their first round to attack you, but keep in mind that two, that you blocked one of their shots twice. So they all have different yeah. numbers, but one of them has only one left. Jesus. Um, it's 23 damage. Mm -hmm. And then... This guy will spend his entire movement getting down, spend his action to wake up the leader. This guy no, will no, climb. No, no. <laughs> this guy will climb down. Will 
spend his action to basically get in front. Actually, no, they can't do it. He's down here. Yeah, so he's just going to put himself in front and we'll take the dodge action. So, Koto, as you are recovering from your wounds, these comedically chained dwarf, dwarves and goblin chained up together run away further away. Oh, nope, that's too much. They have, they have small legs. Yeah, you see a, a giant hand just come out from the crevice, like a big ant. <laughs> I'm in this freaking okay corral shoot off with these archers and this ginormous undead giant coming out. It's not undead out. though. So you, you see like this human or hair come out and it's more like a dirty tan kind of color but that is I all I just think you it's see. comical yeah. that these professional archers are completely ignoring all this co comedic relief that's happening and we're just trying to kill each other. <laughs> Axius, you are up. What would you like to do? You saw Ichabod slide down there. Yeah, what would you um, like to do? I'm going to get out of a rage because I can't take an attack or get hit, so I'm going to get out of a rage. Okay. I am going to use my action for healing hands. Let's see. Yep, lay hands, lay on hands on my wife. And yep. I'm going to expend 13 hit points. So she gets 13 hit points back. Okay, she is up. Perfect. I'm going to use my bow. I'm, I'm going to use my free action to give her a kiss and then <laughs> tell her to please cast Block Fog Cloud on the gate or behind the gate to where the city is, where Ichabod is. And I'm going to use my bonus action to harness divine power to regain my second level spell slot, just in case. Nice. Mm. Ichabod, yeah. there is a guy between... Well, do you want to move first off? My apologies. Nope. I'm going to attack that first guy in front of me with the Scourge. Alright. Attack with this. And pull advantage. my plus one dagger for my bonus action attack. Alright. All right. Make your attack with disadvantage. Disadvantage? Yeah, because he's actively blocking and dodging. Trying to shield his commander. 14, I rolled a 17 and a 14, plus 6 is 20. That hits. The con save, natural one. This guy falls unconscious. Second attack, I'll move up on the leader and hit him with the... Alright, make your attack with advantage because he's prone. With advantage? Yep, because he's prone. 15 plus 6 is 21. That hits. Eight and three is 11 points to him. Does he have to make a con save? Wait, doesn't he have sneak attack too? He doesn't have an... Oh, yeah, he does have... So go ahead, roll your sneak attack. Oh, okay. Because you got advantage on that roll. Yep. yep. You do Good that call. while I roll a there con save. There it is. Three more points of damage. Three more points of damage. The leader roll. rolled it. Nice. The leader... Succeeded with a 19. Damn. Alright. Then with my dagger, I'm going to swing at him again. Alright. Stab him with advantage. Five and a 17. 17 plus my day plus one dagger plus seven. So that's 24 to hit. Alright. Before the hit is commenced. The, le the leader will use his reaction and he says, Ben, protect me! So he will take the damage instead. So his comrade next to him will take the hit. Oh. So well, just rearrange it. Damage from the dagger. From the dagger. Five points of damage. Yep. He. You see this guy dodge in the way of a dagger attack as he takes the stab. Okay. Is that it? That's it for me, all three. Alright. It's Anaya's turn. 
Axius, what do I do? What's the plan? Things kind of... I have no idea. Echobot was not supposed to go under. Um... Shoot. Crap. Just shoot a volley. Shoot a volley. Go find Kodo and figure out where to shoot a volley. Um... Um... Okay. She will spend all her movement there and will yell at you, Kodo. Kodo, what's a volley? <laughs> Quite busy. Ollie, <laughs> is something that you do with three or more people in a line with ranged weapons. I don't think you're trained. What should I do? Try to get up on wall. Um, okay. She'll get, with her movement and her dash, she can just get to the wall, not ready to climb yet. This poor little girl's looking at a 25 foot wall like, uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> mad if like wa I can walk on it. Oh, no. How the All fuck right. am I supposed to do this shit? So, Emrin will cast Fog Cloud using her only spell slot for the day. Uh, where would you... No. Wait. Yes, they had a long rest, so she gets all her slots back. Rounded up. She has three slots. So, oh, wait. Yep, you're right. My apologies. So, she's down yep. to one now. Okay. All right. Where would you... Where did you tell her to cast Fog Cloud? Uh, at the gate, I'm assuming I am hoping that the radius of Fog Cloud would conceal right. Ichabod. Because again, check. I don't know how he's doing in the fight. Okay, let me just check Fog Cloud real quick to see if it does anything special. I know it goes around corners, but it's sealed behind the stone wall. Create a 20 foot radius spear on center range, which is in front of the gate. The spear spreads around corner corners and is heavily obscured. It does not, it wouldn't help. Ichabod in this situation because it is not going through like any cracks or crevices. It just goes around the corners. Then can she cast darkness? She Instead. can. Um, so darkness would be her once per day use. So let me just mm -hmm. retract that spell slot. But you did tell her to cast Fog Cloud though. I know, but if she's aware that she can't do it, I mean, I don't know anything about any of these spells that she has. Yeah, she would know that based on her intelligence. Uh, I'm assuming in front of the gate too. Yeah, so that the radius would I don't know. Help right. out, I guess. I'm just check I'm just reading darkness here. So it's a fifteen for a sphere in a duration. Darkness spreads around corners. Yeah, it wouldn't go through the wall, unfortunately. It would just be placed on the wall itself. Oh, uh, then I have no idea. She can do what she wants though. I have no Alright, she'll go with the original there and cost fog cloud. But she will cast it in a way which could possibly help you guys. She will cast it above this vicinity, I guess. But let me just draw a fog cloud here. <clears throat> 20 foot field. So it would be this. This is above, <laughs> not in. So she casts fog cloud and it's basically covering this whole area, but it's not going into the entrance. So for all I know, these archers are just seeing a fog form in front of the entrance. And she'll stand up, and we'll give you a kiss back. Um, Kodo, what would you like to do? They're all throwing pepper at this guy, because fuck him. All right. It's a 21. That hits. 12 points of damage? Yep. Is he still up? Barely standing. Alright, one more arrow. 23. That will hit. How does he die? Uh, through the chest. He looks no! pretty cool. <laughs> This guy's dead. He shot to this guy on the roof. Alright. I've, I've hit him before, so... Hopefully, I could do some more damage. Twenty-four. Twenty-four hits. Nine plus my D four. Nice. That's thirteen points of damage. Uh, let me just make a deck save for him. 
before he falls off the roof. Which he does before make. He falls he, off the roof. He does make it. He does it, make so, it? Yeah, so 12 uh, plus 3. So he just, he it looks like it's about to trip, but he just managed to get his footing on. But he looks okay. very wounded. I'm still up in the tower. My AC is 20. Mm hmm. Alrighty. Archers go. So, Archer, that you shot at him will pull out of him your arrow and will try to shoot at you. But he misses with a natural one. Second attack. Gets cocked. Misses again. He's losing so much blood that his shots are getting weaker. Now it's time for this archer in the back. Misses. Misses. So <laughs> your your cover is giving you great advantage in this fight so far. So now yeah, we that's get... the only reason why I'm still alive. <laughs> so now we get to the front line action. Um, the dude in front of Ichabod is going to attack Ichabod twice with the long sword. That's a critical hit. All right. You will take. You'll take 14 points of slashing damage. Second okay. attack. Will miss. So he lands good, but then you dodge the second one. The commander will stand up. I just boop him out of there. There we go. Um, let's see here. The commander will pull out his longsword. We'll hold it with two hands. And will go in and attack. And he will go into a rage before doing so. The commander then says, You are a fool if you think you and your friends could actually take over this place. If you're reckless. 17 hit. Yeah. You take... 10 points of slashing damage. Second attack, reckless. Now remember, you get advantage on yep. attacks because he's using reckless against you, bud. Yep, yeah. that, and, he, and he's barely standing, too. Does a 15 hit? Nope. Alright. He will end his turn with that. The dude is still unconscious, so he can't do anything. The dwarves and the goblin say, Run! Run! The goblin would just say some nonsense in goblin that you guys can't understand. And coming out of this big mining thing, you see a hand initially at first Koto, but then you see a second pair of hands. And you see the mountain itself shift as boulders begin to move. And what comes out of it is a very angry very crazy and very starved looking hill giant now this is where i tell the players that this hill giant is a special hill giant to where it has abilities that could possibly insta kill you that being said it has an ability where i have to roll d10 to determine its behavior and its behavior is random so this is all luck on the dice it will dictate the behavior throughout the rest of his movements. And again, it has abilities that can kill you. So, big warning. You see this hill giant look around in a very hungry gaze. He goes, ah, yeah, hungry, must buy food. He goes over to here and just crushes both of these archers. And just gobbles into his mouth and gives a mighty roar. And as he gives a mighty roar, and with everyone who could see the hill giant, including you, Axius, as this hill giant stands way, way above the stone towers, we will call it a session here tonight. <laughs> so next week we'll see what this hill giant will do. A very unpredictable hill giant at that. So till then, guys. We'll see you next time as we will continue this fight. Take care, guys.